Am I the asshole for starting a house project without discussing it with my wife? My wife Amy, 27 female, and I, 27 male, have a spare room in our home. We've gone back and forth since we moved in two plus years ago about what we wanted to do with it, but we never took the initiative to actually implement any of these plans. We already have a sufficient number of guest rooms and an office, so the room just sits there, unutilized. I'm not that worried about it, but my wife brings it up now and then. These mentions are just of the unused room itself, not anything concrete that she actually wants to use it for. I made a new friend, Ben, 30 male, about 8 months ago, and it was very much one of those we connected from the first time we spoke to each other situations. I've actually never had that many close male friends, so this connection is especially important to me. The conversation flowed so easily, we had loads in common. I didn't think such a huge amount of genuine love and respect for a person could be developed in less than a year, but it's been very cool to experience that and to get to know him. One of the things that we bonded over was a similar love for art and music. Ben is way, way more talented than I am when it comes to painting, but it's something that we both enjoy. His birthday is coming up soon, and I thought on top of what else I was getting him, I could turn the spare room into something similar to an art studio for us both to use. I already ordered a few things for it, and was getting ready to jump into painting the walls when my wife came in and demanded to know what I was doing. I explained that I was finally fixing up the spare room. She said that it was unacceptable that I had done this without confirming with her that it was okay, but I didn't think that I would need to since it's been two years and the room has basically never been touched. Am I the asshole? I feel like yes, you're the asshole for doing that. From what I gather, this is a joint owned property and you're in a relationship where communication is a must. And yet you decided to make a unilateral decision and take it upon yourself to do this. I feel like that's a big no-no and I feel like you're an asshole for doing it, so you're the asshole. Now in the comments, you're the asshole. And this is not just about fixing up a room, this is about you allowing your friend part ownership and control over a place in your house that you share with your wife. What were you gonna do? Give him a key? If I were the wife, I would be thinking long and hard about having a spouse who gives open access to my home to someone he has only known for 8 months. My husband is pretty social and makes friends easily, but he knows better than to give a copy of our house keys to anyone without having that discussion with me. That's a 2 yes, 1 no scenario. You're the asshole to OP, who is apparently so blinded by a shiny new friend that he forgot that his wife also lives in the same house and has a say about who should have a key to her home, her safe place. Yeah, this is so hilariously not a thing that would ever happen between two female roommates. Oh, a guy I've been friends with for eight months has a key to our place now. Can you imagine? You're the asshole, and the reason is that you're essentially getting a roommate without asking your wife. That is the real issue. You actually state that you would be fixing up the room as an additional gift to Ben. As others have posted, exactly how do you view the logistics of this? I certainly wouldn't want a third party to have unlimited access at any time to a room in my home. It'd be questionable to do this if it were an outbuilding or space in the garage because the studio could be used without physically going into the home, but even that would be something that you decide with your partner who also lives there. I know people who paint. And really, there isn't much to fixing up a place to paint, provided it has natural light. In fact, it is generally the antithesis of fixing up, because it is assumed that it will get messed up from paint and other materials, so the flooring will be shot. What exactly did you envision in terms of fixing it up? In essence, you bring in the supplies you need for the type of art you're creating, and that is it. All I'm gonna say is buckle up guys, it gets a bit spicy from here. OP replies, I wanted to generally make this space a little cozier and homier. He and I both like collecting records, so I was going to get another record player to put in the corner for when one or both of us were working. Paint the walls, also get a rug and some furniture that we didn't mind getting a little bit messy. You know, maybe some candles, a bearskin rug, and a sex swing. Oh, and a mechanism to lock the door from the inside. You don't want your wife interrupting you. OP replies, the sex swing and bearskin rug are inspired choices, but not really either of our styles. 
<laughs> Just joking. The fact that you haven't responded to any of the questions pertaining to your sexuality says a lot. OP says, I don't have any solid answers to give. You don't have any solid answers about your own sexuality? Yikes! I feel really bad for your wife. And OP says, this is exactly why I was avoiding these questions. Because you know that if you answer truthfully, you will have to admit that you are having an affair with Ben? OP says, because I don't want to listen to people saying they feel sorry for my wife because I'm questioning intimate details of my identity. Questioning people aren't inconveniences, or whatever this line of thinking is leading people to believe. We can sympathize with your wife and feel bad for the awkward, awful position that she's in while sympathizing with you in discovering something about yourself that likely isn't convenient for you or for your marriage. However, choosing to go behind her back and gifting him a room in a house that she lives in is cruel on your part. You need to do right by her and figure out what you want without stomping all over her and bringing your confusion physically into the house. Don't be a cake eater. Have some empathy, OP. Stop being an asshole and separate while you figure your crap out. Show her the respect of being honest, if nothing else. And now on to the update. This is gonna be a fun one. First off, I'd like to thank everyone who was compassionate towards me in the comments. Ben and I sat down and talked on Tuesday night about everything. It was overwhelming to say the least. He was gentle and sweet as always and allowed me the time and space to say everything I needed to. That night was one of the most beautiful of my life. Acceptance, love, and trust are truly so powerful. Life-changing. Amy and I had a conversation about the spare room last night. I had been putting it off since my post a few days ago and was hoping to wait until the weekend to talk about it all, but she insisted. I did as a lot of comments suggested and used the renovation as a lead-in to talk about the other things going on. I told her that her reaction to it brought up a lot of confusing emotions for me that I have spent the last few days working through and things continued from there. I had toyed with the idea of couples therapy and it was something that she suggested, but I don't think it's a viable option. I love her, but I have come to realize that I was never in love with her like I once thought. And after getting to really and truly experience that, it wouldn't be fair to either of us if we tried to force something that I'm not capable of giving to her. I'll be splitting my time, staying in one of our guest rooms, slash with Ben in his apartment for the time being, while we separate and work things out moving forward. Obviously that means the room renovations have been paused until further notice. I'm really, really excited for the future. And now in the comments... Poor Amy. OP had an emotional affair and then left her. Poor Amy. She deserves better. He's calling his relationship with Ben the most beautiful, amazing thing. Life-changing. I think we all see where this is going. A good portion of us saw this in his original post. It was a life-changing relationship. No one does it better than Ben and I. We have the most passionate in the world I think I've ever seen. You made a huge decision in the midst of a crush. It is what it is, but don't you ever go crawling back to that poor woman. OP replies, This decision wasn't made lightly, or solely based on my best friend. This was largely due to the fact that I realized I can't connect with women on the same level that I do with men. Which is fine, but while you're on an emotional high, your wife is feeling heartbreak and betrayal. And from what it sounds like putting the renovation on pause, you want to also keep the house. You may not be in love with your wife, but you said that you do love her. So if you love her, don't treat her like trash during the process of a breakdown of your marriage. Don't be selfish. She hasn't wronged you. Are you in love with Ben? OP replies, I don't know if I'm fully prepared to confront this yet. While I subconsciously knew my feelings for Ben were a lot different and more intense than anything I had ever felt before, it was hard to even admit that to myself a little while ago. That's why all of the sexuality questions on the last post felt off to me. It was forcing me to be vulnerable. They also made me angry in a way. Because literal strangers were pointing out things about me from a simple post slash few comments that I struggled to see about myself. 
In an attempt to answer your question, if this isn't what in love feels like, I'm kind of scared to experience the real thing with how all-consuming this level of fulfillment already is. Is he in love with you? And OP replies, you would need to ask him that one. That level of care and overwhelming support that I've received all throughout our friendship, but especially since we had our conversation, certainly makes me feel loved. Well, that's why it's called an emotional affair. As you move forward, just be honest if anyone asks you if you've ever cheated. The answer is yes. If only you had this conversation before emotionally cheating on her. But at least you took people's advice and not drag it any longer. But why are you splitting time between the house that you currently live in with Amy and Ben's? Isn't that a little insensitive? I know that you guys have broken up, but you're essentially going to be reminding Amy that every night you're not at the house, you're over at the place of the person that you left her for. Why not just stay at Ben's while you guys sort everything out? I also vaguely remember a comment about the house being a lifelong birthday present for Amy. Just curious, what happened to that? Does that mean that you're buying Amy's share of the house? And OP says, I'm currently looking for a place of my own to stay for the time being. I don't expect my friends to house me full time on such short notice. We haven't began discussing how we're splitting assets yet. I don't think she's particularly interested in keeping the house, or if that's an option for her. So why not hold off spending nights at Ben's until you find out a feasible living situation for yourself? You call him your friend. Surely he'll understand that this is a hard time for your wife, and her feelings need to be considered given how her world, as she knew it, kind of crashed and burned. I know that you're excited for your future, but your callousness towards Amy is a recurring theme in most, if not all, of your posts and comments. Can't you find it in your heart to give her a break? Nutflation with the kidney shot, he just says, because he wants to suck Ben's cock. <laughs> oh my god. OP replies, I feel the worst thing either of us could do right now is isolate ourselves. We each have our respective people that we lean on in hard times like this. Cutting those people out or holding off seems ill-advised. So you're only thinking of what you want. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, OP's just a selfish asshole to the core. My girlfriend asked me if I would get a vasectomy, and I initially told her probably not. And now she's upset with me, and is considering this in our relationship, and doesn't want to talk. We are in a long distance relationship, and she asked me about this out of the blue in a FaceTime call, in light of the Roe v Wade situation happening in the US right now. I told her that I honestly didn't even know what a vasectomy initially was, so she explained it to me that same call. After explaining, she asked me if I would do one, and I told her probably not, and now she's upset with me and won't reply to me. After she hung up, I went ahead and spent a few hours reading articles and blogs to educate myself about the benefits of vasectomies and the reasons to decide if it's the best choice for me. I'm much more okay with going through a procedure now after reading up about it, but I'm not 100% for doing it because of the process and cost of it and us both talking about wanting to marry each other and having children together. I don't think it's fair for her to ask me out of the blue an important question like this and then get upset with my initial answer because it takes many couples months and even years to discuss with each other if a vasectomy is the best option. I can understand her or any girl getting upset if their partner encourages them to tie their tubes or use birth control and not do the same thing, but I never pressed those ideas towards her because I know how birth control might negatively affect her. I've told her that I'd much rather choose abstinence as the first option before considering doing a vasectomy, and also because sure, a vasectomy is reversible, but also there could be complications where it won't work and also can be very costly. I've sent her a long text about how I feel and how I've educated myself on it, but I still need to learn more about the procedure and if it's right. I also let her know how I feel that it isn't fair for her to be upset after my initial response because something as big as this takes a lot of time to think through. She still hasn't replied to me, so I'm going to wait a little bit to see if she wants to call and talk about it after she reflects on my response. I'm not sure what I should say. Edit, 
I appreciate all of these responses, and for clarification, yes, I always use condoms. And I also don't think she intended me of doing the surgery at my age, but it was more of a hypothetical question that she gave me after a TikTok she saw. I'm going to wait a little bit to see if she's ready to talk and let her know that I'm there to support her and discuss the best options for us if we decide in the future to have kids together, which she wanted before. I understand her reaction is based on how scary it is for women right now in the US, and I think it's partly because she might not have even read up on vasectomies much in the first place. I'm hoping we can settle this appropriately while both are educated enough to understand how important a decision like this can be for me. Thank you all. I feel like this one's just a little bit muddy because there wasn't complete clear communication and the reason she was asking the question and her intention behind it wasn't completely clear, so OP was kind of taken aback, I'd imagine. The question being, if you would get a vasectomy, not will you get a vasectomy? I can understand an immediate reaction being like, what, you'd never consider getting a vasectomy? That's just off the table, what? But at the same time, I don't think it's fair on OP to dump that on them, especially if they don't have much knowledge of that area. Let's see what the comments have to say. Okay, from a woman, don't get a vasectomy until you know that you don't want more kids. A vasectomy can be reversed in some situations, but it's not 100%. It wasn't meant as a temporary form of birth control, it is meant to be permanent. Yes. Every doctor will tell you to treat the vasectomy like it is permanent. Last stat I saw was that it has a 95% 10-year reversal rate, but it's important to remember that it's not 95% the entire time, but that it's easier early on, but it gets more difficult the longer you wait. And any D&D player will let you know that 5% is a higher risk than you realize. Last thing is to check if your insurance covers the reversal. A lot cover the initial procedure, but many don't cover the reversal. I don't think your girlfriend is handling this as well as she could, but one piece of advice I can give you, don't ever give an answer when you are not informed yet. I'm sorry I can't give you an answer right now because I've just learned about it and I need to do research to give you a fair answer is always an acceptable answer. It's possible that your girlfriend is upset because you gave her an answer. It's hard to do when someone is expecting an answer right then and there, which is why I agree that your girlfriend is being unreasonable. You have to stick to your ground and just not answer when you don't know. I hope that helps for the future. And OP replies, That's also been running in my mind, and I think you're 100% right. She's upset because I gave an answer that she didn't expect initially. And now, on to the update. So after a few days of her not replying to me, she finally wanted to talk to me, and she laid the news out that she wants us to take a break indefinitely so that we can both mature. I am absolutely devastated. She mentioned that she thought we butt heads too much with different viewpoints, and that she wanted to break up because she was afraid that we were going to resent each other, and she didn't want me to feel like I don't have a voice in the relationship anymore. She said if it was meant to be, then we'll find each other again. I want to clarify that in our two-year relationship, we never argued, but we did butt heads sometimes, and when I did make her upset, I owed up to it and apologized and promised to learn from those times. First time was when I mistakenly downplayed her family trauma and told her that her parents were just trying to look out for her. I was ignorant because we both grew up differently, and so I apologized and wanted to learn because she never told me the extent of her past family trauma until I upset her. After some time, she told me more about how the extent of that trauma was, and I felt so guilty and sorry for what I did. I made a promise to always comfort her and support her because of it, while she promised to communicate better to me when she was upset. Another time was this past December, when she thought that I was getting too comfortable in the relationship, and she wanted me to fight for her. She didn't tell me until one day she ignored me for a few days, and I tried to ask if she was okay, and asked how I could help her. I'm the type of person who has that, let's fix it now mentality, while she's the type of person to wait some time until she's ready to fix it. I understood her coping style, so I gave her time. When she was ready to talk again, we both apologized to each other, and she agreed to fix her communication with me again, and I promised to take more initiative in our relationship. 
Talking to other friends who were in relationships, they assured me it was okay for couples to have disagreements with each other because we can't read each other's minds. But the best thing to learn from those disagreements is to communicate and set those expectations as well as understand each other's different viewpoints so that you both learn. I spent so much time trying to educate myself and would always make sure that she was okay. But now with this news of wanting to take an indefinite break and practically breaking up, I feel so guilty that she didn't trust me enough to talk to me about what she wanted me to be, because I loved her for who she was. I feel hurt that I've worked so hard to learn and better myself and check up on her to make her happy after our talks, and it still wasn't enough to keep us together. She wanted me to fight for her, and I put so much aside to fight for her, but her giving up fighting for me hurt so much. Maybe I should have thought of those as flags in our relationship, because I didn't know the severity of her feeling that way, and we both had different thoughts on how the well-being of our relationship actually was. I thought we were doing great, and we were making our relationship stronger, but for her, this most recent event happened to be her last straw. I understand this is the best for us so that we can both reflect and reevaluate on what we strive for in our own lives, especially her, since she's still trying to get into grad school, and I've already graduated and am working full time. I want to respect her boundaries and what she wants because I don't want her unhappy, but it's just so fresh and it hurts knowing that you've worked so hard to learn and take care of someone to make sure they were okay, and when you need them the most, they decide to leave you without asking if you're okay. Because right now I'm not. My last message to her after we talked was that I told her that I will always support her and that I would always be there if she needed anything. I wish she asked me what I needed, because I want to tell her that I need her. I've been talking to close friends and family, which I appreciate having that support system to rely on for my mental well-being. Some recommended me to wait a few months and reach out to her again to see what happens, or at least get some closure. When is a good time to reach back out? Also, any advice on how to cope and move on is appreciated. My friends also recommended me to work out and do other things that will allow myself to grow and accept who I am. Honestly, even just typing this post out has helped me. I appreciate all of the advice given in the previous post and on this one. And now in the comments, please do not ever refer to it as an indefinite break. She broke up with you. Calling it an indefinite break is silly and will make things harder for you in the long run. And OP replies, thanks. I know it's not healthy to call it like that, but that little hope that maybe I can talk to her again, I keep telling myself for now. I know it's going to take some time for me to finally accept it for what it is. As a girl, whenever I saw something like that in relationships around me, it was women deciding they don't want the relationship anymore and just using some question they thought would make them the good guy in leaving. Like, would you like to have kids? and not being sure would let them leave and tell all of their friends that the guy wasn't ready to commit and he was overall a horrible person. It totally wasn't her having a crush on somebody else or not being satisfied with some part of her life enough to just throw it all away without a reason. Also, me and my fiance have adopted this rule from our parents to never go to sleep angry with each other. I can't fathom not talking to him for days. I would never do that to an enemy, let alone a person I love, to leave them hanging and questioning themselves. You don't cause suffering to people you love, at least not willingly, so maybe you dodged a bullet. OP replies, She would always ask me some tough questions to put me in the spotlight, and I would usually not give her the answer she wanted, which made me feel guilty. I wish I used your rule from the get-go, because now I can't really use it to help us out. And now, onto the final update. Well, now after a couple of months of the break, she reached out to me a few weeks ago to say that she doesn't want to be together. I was sad hearing the news, but during that break, I was already prepared myself to move on anyways. We both mutually agreed to not be friends anymore and to unfollow each other on social media, as well as ship some personal belongings back to one another. I've come to realize that we were incompatible in our family values and that we both were in different stages of our lives since she was trying to get into grad school while working full time as an IT slash web developer. She was also a bit manipulative and always talked bad about people that she didn't like. 
I'm not perfect either, as I made some mistakes in our relationship too. Honestly though, I am in such a better state of mind now that we have broken up. I followed advice from friends, a relationship counsellor, and those of you who gave some good reasoning on my previous posts. I've been working out consistently, I've been enjoying my time with friends and family, I've been researching deep into getting a new car in this crazy market, which is exciting. Some of my girlfriends have also hit me up to hang out at boba shops. I'm even trying to plan a fun road trip to try out some good Korean food and desserts with one of them, so we'll see what that ends up turning into. I'm just happy that I'm able to get over my ex a lot easier than I expected, and I just wanted to thank those of you on Reddit who helped enlighten me on my situation. And now in the comments, now go get the vasectomy out of spite. <laughs> just kidding. Good for you, man. And OP says, thanks for giving me a good chuckle at work. So she ghosted you for months, and you waited until she broke up with you for it to be over. Grow a spine and don't let anyone treat you with such small regard. You will find someone better that doesn't treat you as disposable at every whim. And OP replies, Huh, yeah, I already had the feeling that it wasn't going to be well. But at that time, I just wanted to wait to let her reach out first because it was her decision. Actually, no. You have every right to decide whether or not to stay in a relationship as well, so it wasn't necessarily her decision. You could have just as rightfully told her that it was over long before she told you that it was. And OP says, You are absolutely right. I've learned that now that it's over. I'm glad he's out, but it makes me cringe when people do crap like this. Waiting for months to hear if you're getting back together? At the face to face, I would have just said, Let's just make it official. We are broken up and you are right that you need to grow. Testing is problematic behavior in a relationship be well, and washed my hands of it. She wanted me to fight for her was a huge red flag. Always is. Run, do not walk, away from people that purposefully test you. It's easy to have this turned against you in a relationship. My ex would say that I don't do enough for her, organization, chores, gifts, etc., and that I needed to fight for her, but she would be so mean and rageful towards me, and I was frustrated and depressed. I just resented her telling me to fight for her, when I was also being treated like crap. I don't know, just getting some bad flashbacks. Our next post is titled, Am I the asshole for wanting my mum at the delivery of my child, and not my stepmom? I know, I know, it sounds bad, but please hear me out. I'm, 25 female, due this summer for my first child. Due to COVID, I'm only allowed one person in the delivery room when I give birth. Normally this would be the father, but he doesn't want to be in the child's life, and I've accepted that. So now here is my dilemma. I moved into my dad's and her house before I found out about the pregnancy. My mum lives in another province. My stepmom lost her only child 20 plus years ago due to her being too premature. She was never even supposed to be able to have any. Ever since she found out I'm pregnant, she has been over the moon, talking about how this is her second chance to finally get to raise a child and that she is so happy. I'm happy for her. I really, really am. And grateful for all the help that she can give me. But when the topic came up about delivery and how I can only have one person, my dad brought up her being the person. I was a little weirded out being that I've only known her for about three years. I told my dad that I already talked to my mum about coming and being the one in the room. Seeing as she doesn't live in the province and won't really be there for the child growing up, I figured it would be fair, right? If anyone is gonna be seeing my bits, I'd kind of rather someone that's already seen them, you know? But my dad's been sulking a little, not saying anything to me, but I know my dad. I just wanna know, am I being unreasonable? She's going to be there for everything else in the child's life. I'm living in their house, and it's not like she's missing anything, and my mum would only see the baby for the delivery and nothing else. We are not financially well off, and she can't just visit whenever. But I'm having second thoughts now because of hormones, and I'm wondering if I'm being an asshole. Please let me know if I am. OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. 
I think I might be the asshole because I'm living at home with her and my dad, and I'm her first stepchild to give birth in the family, making this the first grandbaby, and maybe also she lost her child, and maybe this is a way to cope and make better memories. And now in the comments, not the asshole, but also the second chance to raise a child line sets off alarm bells for me. If you're able to, I would try to find another place to live. That is oddly territorial for a step-grandmother and a woman you've known for three years. This, that comment freaked me out. You've known her for three years and she thinks she's raising your child? Hello? Not the asshole. Your birth, your choice. Lol what? This sub hates step-parents, especially newer ones who want an active role in the adult OP's life. Not the asshole. And OP replies, She's honestly such a sweet lady. She's already helped me out a lot, and she doesn't even have a problem with my decision. It's my dad that's sulking, lol. Your dad is so extra. But yeah, she doesn't need to see the baby coming out of your purple love heart, according to this person. She'll have plenty of other opportunities for grandmotherly experiences. Question, are you giving your child to your dad and stepmom to adopt? And OP says, Oh no, 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 not at all. I moved in with them to save some money due to COVID and just happened to find out about the pregnancy a few weeks after. I was on birth control. Then you really need to nip the second chance to raise a child stuff from your stepmom in the butt. She knows you're the mum, right? That she's not, nor will ever, be this child's mother. Because I have some concerns just from what you said. So why is your stepmother saying this is her second chance to raise a child? And OP says, because I live with them and plan to continue to do so for at least a year or two until COVID stops being such an issue. She'll be helping out a lot with a child when it's born. I didn't mean raise as in from birth to adulthood. Sorry if that wasn't clear. Are you sure that she's aware of what you mean? This sounds like a terrible idea for someone with such an insane case of baby rabies. I don't know the laws where you are, but in my country, if you let them have that much time with a kid, you're setting up a really great case for them to get grandparents' rights and forced visitation. What if they try and be controlling and you want to leave? They may be able to force you to let them have your kid part-time or not to be able to move to a new city, etc. They already sound controlling and overbearing. I would 100% talk to a lawyer about this before you screw up yourself and your kid's life by giving all control to these crazies. And I'd move out and go low contact. Anyone that entitled to someone else's child is not going to take no for an answer. And OP has a comment further down that says, I just want to add this for clarity after reading some comments. My stepmom is perfectly fine with my decision and she is a wonderful lady. It's my dad that's moody and sulky with me right now. And no, I don't think she's going to go mental and think that my baby is hers. She knows I'm the mom. She's just very happy to be able to do all the things that she missed out on. Change diapers, go for walks, pick out clothes. And I'm okay with that. I'm happy to give her the things that she missed out on. I don't mind in the slightest, lol. She does the same thing to me. Goes shopping for me, takes me to get hair and nails done, etc. I will be moving out in a few years, and she knows this. She's just happy to get the baby time that she couldn't get with her daughter. Again, I think the asshole here is my dad. And now, onto the update. So, my little one is a year old now, and simply the cutest little princess ever. It's been a while since my very first post on Reddit, and I figured you guys should have an update. So, things worked out pretty well. My mom wasn't able to be at the birth due to some health issues on her end, and she was mad at me for not traveling to her to have my baby there. Honestly, the greatest thing I did was staying put. I can't even describe how helpful my stepmom has been with my little one. I know that a lot of people were concerned that she wanted to take my baby, but I can thankfully tell you that that's the furthest thing from the truth. She has never once overstepped as a nana, my father and her actually listen to me as a parent, and haven't interfered with my parenting. They listen to what I put down for ground rules and have been the greatest support in my and my daughter's life. All I really hear from my mom is guilt trips that she missed her only granddaughter's birth and that I was selfish for not traveling to her, which is turning into the greatest thing I could have done. It's saving my ass in court. 
The child's father has really gone off the deep end and is trying to take me to court for full custody. Considering that he lives in a whole other province, she was born here, he has never really been in her life and didn't even pay child support until she was six months old, my lawyer told me that he isn't getting it. So yeah, that's what's been going on in my life since my last post. Hope you enjoyed, and thank you all for the kind words and messages. Your mum sounds unreasonable AF, and I'm glad that you have your dad and stepmom for support. I hope the court staff is you filing child support and not other staff because you don't need that drama. And OP replies, it's for child support and custody. I'm positive that he was trying to kidnap her when he visited for her birthday. It's a whole story, lol. But the mod said that it would be better to leave that part out, and for the most part, I agree. It deserves its own post, lol. Holy crap, that is terrifying. Good on you for being vigilant and protecting your sweet baby girl at all costs. I hope everything works out for you in the end with your daughter's father, and I'm so happy that you have such amazing support with your step mum and dad. You should definitely post the story of the attempted kidnapping if you are comfortable to do so though. I'm so curious about how all that went down. Maybe post it on your profile? Your ex, being from a Muslim country, if he is able to take your daughter out of the country and to Egypt, you will lose your daughter forever. In Islam, children belong to the father only, and Egypt does not recognize foreign custody orders. Your ex may well have already made an ID in order to take your daughter to Egypt. You must get a lawyer who specializes in international custody law, or at least some familiarity, and get full custody. Do not delete any correspondence he has sent because he is a flight risk. And OP says, way ahead of you. Trust me, I know. That's why him asking for all her ID was so sus to me. And the fact that he had his parents come to Canada to see her at the same time? Hell nah. Every alarm bell in my head went off at the same time. So your mother wanted you to move your hugely pregnant self to her mid pandemic, no less, and is annoyed that you refused? Good grief, is she always this unreasonable? Congratulations on the new squish. Let me see if I have this straight. You live in province A and your buyer mother lives in province B. Your obstetrician lives in province A as well, along with your entire support system. And you're the bad guy for not traveling to province B so that buyer mother can be in the room for the birth? Wow. That's a huge red flag in my estimation, and I'm betting that attitude is related to why your buyer parents are divorced. Congratulations on having a happy, healthy baby, and that your buyer dad and stepmom are turning out to be great grandparents. And OP replies, right? I mean, I did want her there. It was pretty embarrassing to be basically naked in front of my dad's wife, but not enough to travel 800-ish miles while pregnant just to give birth. I traveled there when she was three months old, and that was a pain as it is, lol. I hate that women feel pressured to host the childbirth show with whoever the hell wants to come. I'm a fervent believer that the mother can and should kick the father out of the delivery room if that's what she wants. Same here, I don't get it. I mean, I understand wanting someone there to keep you calm and not panicking as you go through something so monumental and potentially dangerous, but good God, I wouldn't want anyone in the room except whoever is necessary. I ain't got time to entertain anyone. Mothers have the right to kick everybody out of the room. Good delivery nurses are sensitive to that and provide good screening. We advised ours that we didn't want anybody there, maybe especially family. Mums do not need an excuse. You know how much blood, poop, and too high you're likely to see during delivery? That should be enough of a reason. And now it's time for the attempted kidnap story. What an exciting time ahead. My ex attempted to kidnap my child and is mad at me because I didn't let it happen. So a few people messaged me asking about it, so I'll explain. My ex has never really been in my daughter's life. He's seen her three times. Twice was me traveling 800 miles with a baby to visit other family. The third time he came to visit her for her birthday. When he visited, all he did was make demands, saying that he should have her for a week and then I'll have her for her birthday week. I did not agree with this. I think it would have been incredibly difficult and traumatize her, but he didn't care about that. The best compromise that we could come up with was one day on, one day off while he visits. 
What I wasn't prepared for was for him to tell me that I wasn't invited for his time with my daughter. That it was just going to be him taking her with his parents and girlfriend, that he cheated on me with while pregnant, to go sightseeing, and that I didn't need to know where they were at all times. It hurt every fiber of my being, but I let it last for two days. The panic was unreal, because he was her father, until he messed up his own plan. See, she was having poop problems, like most babies, and we both said that it would be a good idea to take her to the hospital. I was gonna go in the morning, but it was packed. I told him that it would be better to wait till later. He asked me if I minded if he brought her in the next morning. I said I didn't, but that because he wasn't on the birth certificate, that he would need me to go with him. Suddenly, he wanted to take her up at 3am because he worked the next morning. Whatever, I wasn't happy about getting up that early, but I was willing to do it. He wasn't happy about that as well. He asked me for her medical card number, which can and is also used for ID purposes, to which I said no. I told him that I would come and show it to the doctor. Well, he didn't like that at all. He started ranting that I don't care about my daughter, and that if I wasn't able to help him out, then he'd just use a picture of her birth certificate, the one that he never signed and wasn't on, and the only reason that he had a picture was to put her on his insurance, and suddenly, alarm bells started ringing in my head. He told me that he needed a picture of her birth certificate because of insurance, but that it would be deleted right after. And now he's asking for more of her ID? I asked him to please delete the picture because he had no right to it. It can be used to travel inside Canada, and that I won't be giving him her card number, also is used for ID, and that I was going to the hospital now so he wasn't needed. She was napping when this went down, and I was going to take her when she woke up. Well, he decided to show up at the hospital looking for me, freaked out when I wasn't there yet, and threatened me that he was going to call 811 and tell them that I wasn't caring for my daughter. Which he did. I had a lovely time dealing with that. And that I better bring her to him now, with all of her ID, or his lawyer is going to make me give her to him. After that incident happened, I stopped all unsupervised access. No more. Nothing. Everything would be done with me there. It was my right to say and do so. Well, wouldn't you know it, he never once came and saw her again while he was there. In fact, he even skipped her birthday, which was the only reason he even came in the first place. Two days after her birthday, he had me served with papers saying all sorts of lies and slander, and now we're just waiting for court. So yeah, sorry for the run-on sentencing. And now in the comments, Ouch, that's rough. Your documentation of her life and his lack of involvement will help you. Keep documenting everything. And OP replies, I started doing that as soon as I found out I was pregnant. He ignored me almost all my pregnancy, and he even told me not to put his name on the birth certificate. I have email proof of that. My lawyer is very happy with me. Lol, I delivered divorce papers to a friend's abusive ex-husband. This was the same way that he tried to give me the runaround to avoid being served. It is amazing how quickly everything crumbles when you say, sure, I can meet your incredibly unreasonable request at a god-awful time in the morning. I saw you asked about a criminal background check in another post. Contact the consulate and ask if it's possible to request a criminal background check through them. They are very protective of their citizens, obviously, so don't identify the reasons why. Be mindful, and let your lawyer be aware that Baby Daddy is an Egyptian citizen, and that there is no international system in place to return abducted kids from Egypt, and that Egypt is not a signatory of the Hague Convention. Document everything. Every attempt he makes. Every communication. Good luck. And OP replies, Yeah, looking to see if there is anything on him there that I could use in my case, but it's looking pretty difficult to do. And his record here is squeaky clean has to be in order to stay in Canada. And yes, that is one of the things in my claims. Child is to never leave Canada or to have a passport until she is of age. Unless she requires one for a high school trip or something. They do occasionally have trips outside of the country. I replied to another comment, and I'm assuming you already know about this, but just in case, you can add your child to a list that the federal government uses when issuing passports so that one will not be issued to your child 
especially before the custody issue was sorted. And OP says, Oh my god, no I didn't. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Once your child is added, no one can remove her except for the custodial parent, I believe. My friend was dealing with a similar issue. Her ex was trying to arrange to take their child to Pakistan without her consent, and luckily her lawyer knew about the list. She didn't even know that her ex applied for the passport until she found out the application had been denied. Am I, 29 female, being cold and uncaring to my boyfriend, 37 male, or is this actually strange? I started dating someone that I have known for years. He used to be my boss at a previous job, and was also my neighbour. During the series of COVID lockdowns where we live, we reconnected, and I quickly fell for him. In the beginning, it was intense and lovely. He made me feel so important, beautiful, and sexy. He put me on a pedestal. He wanted to spend every minute with me, and would text me all the time because he said that, even just for a few hours, he missed me. All of a sudden, about a month into seeing each other, we started fighting about things that I just didn't understand or I couldn't empathize with. The fight will be a day long, sometimes two or three, and wouldn't stop even if I apologized or took responsibility or tried to change the mood with levity. For example, the first of our day-long fights was because I didn't text him goodnight before I fell asleep. I told him, I'm sorry, that's not something I had ever done with a partner before, but if that's what he wanted, I could try it out, because why not? Cute. This led him to tell me that he shouldn't have to ask for these things, that I should just want to do it, and that I don't care or think about him. He accused me of not being invested and playing games, and that he was considering breaking it off with me. I told him that I was in the gym, so I was going to finish my workout, take a breather to think about what he said, and then call him to discuss in a more personal way. He told me, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You're brushing me off. You care more about the gym than fixing things with me. Fights like this happen every four days or so, and I never know where they're going to come from. Once, after spending three days at his house, Friday evening, all Saturday, going to leave Sunday evening, when I said that I was going to head home, he got incredibly angry. He accused me of always having something better to do, not wanting to be around him, not caring, that I must be hiding something. Honestly, I just wanted to go into my own toilet again and shave. This particular argument got so heated, and I'm not even sure how, that when I told him I was done with the conversation and I wanted to go, he grabbed my bag out of my hand and threw it across the room. Even staying with him for a week didn't make him less upset when I left. Every time I hung out with him after, I had to tell him exactly when I planned on leaving, and even then it was, No, stay, stop, why are you always doing this to me? When we make up, it's magical. He will write me little love notes in a breakfast that he makes me. He will sit and brush my hair, unprompted, and sing to me. He will be so affectionate and tell everyone in the world that I am the woman of his life. He talks about how he wants children with me and looks forward to me being his wife and how he has never felt anything like I make him feel. I try to make all of his meals and get him gifts and show I care, but it never seems to be enough. Recently, my surrogate father passed away in my home country. My boyfriend offered to travel with me for as long as I wanted for support. He said that we could stay for months if I chose. Anything I needed. I was so thankful that he was being so supportive and that maybe living together for a while may ease his insecurities. Now that I live with him in self-isolation, I'm finding that no matter what I do, there is always something that he takes very personally. I really don't know if I'm the asshole here, so here are just a few examples. In the airport, I got a text from my ex wishing me condolences and to have a safe flight. I am on very good terms with him, and we've been broken up for two years. My current boyfriend got very upset that I texted him back. I said thanks, I needed that virtual cuddle. Talk later. He said it was inappropriate for me to ask for a hug from an ex. Not quite what I said, but okay. To the point of saying, why didn't you just stay with him then? 
I explained that he had nothing to worry about, but I wasn't going to cut someone I value from my life because he asked me to. He stayed silent and pouting the entire seven-hour flight from Europe to NA. Because I work in GMT, and we're in EST visiting my family now, I wake up early. My day starts at 4am EST, for now. He can work anytime he wants, as his company has global teams in every time zone, and he won't miss out on anything, so he wakes up at 9. A day or so ago, he told me that it really hurt him that I didn't wait until 11 to have breakfast with him. When I tried to explain that, by 11, working the hours that I work, I would have skipped breakfast and lunch. I'm in recovery for an eating disorder, and skipping meals is very much not a part of my recovery plan. He told me that A, the doctors I work with don't know crap and eating on his schedule would make me feel better because it's more regular and with company, and B, that I should want to eat with him because sharing meals means a lot to him, and that if I cared, I would just do it. The night we arrived in the apartment that we're quarantining in, we fell asleep in the lovely, super king-sized bed here. The morning after, he accused me of being mad and cold because I didn't cuddle him at all that night, and he felt rejected. I tried to explain that, sorry, I passed out before him, and I've never been in a bed that big, so I didn't even know that I wasn't cuddling him. I was unconscious and lost in a sea of pillows, and it wasn't on purpose. He told me to stop pushing back on things that he said and just accept his feelings and apologize. He gets annoyed if I don't give him a kiss and a hug before I get out of bed, even if it's for a late night pee. He will huff loudly and then be cranky. I told him I'm just trying not to disturb his sleep, and he told me that my affection is more important than sleep, so I need to start doing it. A friend of mine bought me a Warhammer starter set for a simultaneous welcome home gift, sorry for your loss gift, and something to do in quarantine gift. For those of you that don't know Warhammer, they are small and intricate fantasy models that you build and paint. One of these models, the boss, I guess, is much larger and sometimes has multiple styles or ways to build it. I was reading through the starter guide to decide which style I wanted to build, and he said to me, Oh, so I guess you're going to build the big one then. I asked what he meant, and he said he just wished that I would have offered him to build the boss because he flew all this way for me. He won't let my dog sleep in the bed with me or let me hold her close to my face because she's gross. You care more about that dog than you do me. It's obvious. For a while, I have been able to cope and be patient with his emotions, but since we traveled, I think I'm starting to rapidly lose patience and feelings for him. I feel so guilty because he's a thousand kilometers away from any friends and family, and I don't know if I'm just walking around being totally unmindful and indifferent to how he feels. Is it maybe the stress of the death and sudden living together that's put me off? Should I be patient, or is he actually being too much? If not, how do I gently explain to someone that traveled so far for me that I am just not happy? And now in the comments, I'm not trying to be an ass or anything, but this guy is throwing up more red flags than I can count. Your 37-year-old boyfriend is acting 15 at best. To answer your question outright, he's being a lot. He's being so much that I'd almost worry about being able to get out of this relationship without dealing with some major issues like him chasing you back home. Maybe I'm reading into it too much, but adults don't act like that. It's okay to be sweet and love your partner, but a healthy relationship isn't about constantly worrying about how the other person is going to react to everything you do. A healthy relationship is about choosing the person that allows you to be the best version of yourself you can be, not becoming the best person you can possibly be for all of your partner's needs while you forget about what you want. You're a human too. What's gonna happen when you wanna spend a day with friends? I doubt he's gonna let that happen unless he comes with you or follows you. In my opinion, this is only going to get worse. He's gonna hold on tighter to you, wanting to control even more of your life as time passes. I'm sorry for the honesty, but I'd plan an exit strategy that involves a fast getaway. This guy worries me. And OP replies, thank you. That's what my gut has been telling me, but it is hard to stick to when the lovely part starts again. 
Unfortunately, we have had many breakups where I've walked away, and then out of the pure romance of his texts, I'm convinced that he loves me wholly and I was just being a cow. Rinse, repeat. We should have a serious talk about whether we are better off friends is something that I have said a few times, and now there's a rule he's placed that we can't even hint at breaking up in arguments or discussions because the relationship would be better off if we were both sure that it would never end. As I type that out now, I realize it sounds crazy, but in the moment, it feels romantic. Yes, in a healthy relationship, an argument should never throw around the words break up but he sounds completely suffocating, so you should go with your own heart and best judgement on the issue. The fact that you are outlining complaints so succinctly, I think, is evidence that you are done with this relationship deep down. This guy sounds like a real nut job. Get out while you can. Throwing the bag across the room is a psycho move. He sounds really unstable and self-centred. By no means is this anything you've been doing. It's all him by the sounds of it and edit, I glanced over the dog part, because it was brutally clear that this guy needs to take a hike, but not liking the dog and letting you love her? Now that's where I really draw the line. Send that douchebag packing. F that guy. And OP replies, to be honest, I'm hurt by his actions and words, but what hurts me the most is his feelings about her. Like, he told me he would love it if I left her with someone else for a year while we traveled together and that crushed me. Thank you for the confirmation. I've been feeling very confused, and this feedback has made me feel a lot more confident. And now, on to the update. Thank you. My life has improved dramatically since this sub gave me the courage and clarity to leave. I have a better job, my disorder is managed, I sleep better, my dog is happier, and I have the best partner anyone could ask for. It took a while of fighting and being firm, and ended as everyone suggested that it might. Violently. But I've been free for over a year now. You were all right. If I hadn't left, I would have ended up cold in a ditch somewhere. Instead, I'm going to court in two weeks to hold him responsible for the violence and emotional abuse that he put me through. Really, truly, thank you. And now in the comments, great job. You should be proud. Keep taking care of yourself and don't accept any more crap from anyone. I hope everything goes well in court. And OP replies, Thank you. Whether it does or doesn't, I know at least I'm making him feel a fraction of the fear that he made me feel, and that's enough for me. I am so happy for you and so envious. I am you one year ago. OP replies, You deserve better and will find better once you shake your leech. The first few weeks may be painful, you may feel guilt and shame. They will do everything they can to make you feel like a monster. They will use their old tricks, bring back the old them, the sweet, kind, generous, loving them. It's a trick, and like candy, it may be sweet, but it'll rot you from the inside out. Once you have some distance, you'll remember what happiness is again. You'll see that the little moments of reprieve that you get from their anger and abuse weren't rewards. They were manipulation. You'll start to recognize yourself again. You may also recognize that, along with the trauma they might have given you, they have given you something extremely valuable. An unshakable confidence. You don't have to do it alone. You can seek a professional, and they will help you see your value. You got this. It's always interesting how obvious this all seems when written down from the outside, and how muddy these situations get when you're actually living through them. I'm glad she got out. That guy feels like a nightmare. I'm guilty of this. I was in a toxic relationship. I didn't see it at the time, although I was warned several times. Now I feel almost sick when I remember some of the things, and although I thought I'd be able to stay friendly with him as an adult, I can't stand seeing him. After that, I always ask when meeting story like that, if this exact thing was a story told to you by your friend, what would be your advice to them? Unex post is titled, I, 17 male, don't know how to tell my dad, 32 male, that my stepmom, 37 female, hates me. Hey, this might be a long one, I'm sorry. 
I really don't know what to do about my situation, and I don't have anyone close to me to give me advice, so I thought that here, maybe I can get some advice. I have an amazing dad who raised me since my mum passed away when I was 5 years old. He is my friend, my supporter, and someone who I want to be like when I grow up. When my dad first introduced my stepmom to me, I was 10 years old and she was very nice to me, and he looked so happy that we met and hoped that we could get along. They got married when I was 13, and I was so happy that me and my dad had a new member in our family. I thought me and stepmom were getting along, until I think a few months after their honeymoon, she told me one morning that we just need to pretend to like each other around my dad, but when he's not here, that I shouldn't bother her. Honestly, this shattered me, but I agreed, because I didn't know what else to do. After that day, whenever it was just me and stepmom, she would say things to get to me, and I would just not say anything. I'm introverted and don't like confrontation, so I just took it and thought over time she would get over it, but it actually got worse. She would talk about my height and weight and say I was a funny looking version of my dad. I hoped my dad would notice, but he didn't. He actually thinks me and stepmom are so close and that she understands me. He looks so happy with her that maybe it's worth not saying anything and giving it time. This year, my stepmom started picking on me around my dad, and he's either joined in or ignored it. I have voiced that what she says makes me uncomfortable and hurts, but my dad says that she's just teasing and doesn't mean it to hurt me. Well, right now, I'm at my wit's end, and I'm scared that I'm angry, frustrated at my stepmom and my dad. Dad was away for work, and it was just me and stepmom at home. She got stuck in the dryer and I had to help get her out, I mean, she had a party at home with a couple of her friends. I helped set the house up and cook dinner, cause dad asked me to help out, which was fine. After they ate and just hung out, they were hanging out on the porch when I heard stepmom and her friends talk very loud outside my window while I was in my room. Stepmom's friends talked about how lucky stepmom was to have a nice husband and a house. When they mentioned how nice it was that I cooked for them, stepmom told them that I was annoying and weird, and that she hated me and living with me, and that she couldn't wait till I was 18 to kick me out. I was shocked that she hated me that much, but I didn't know why. To be honest, I thought we were tolerating each other, but to hate me, I must have done something, but I can't think of what I did. I've been kind of down since that day, which was two weeks ago, and I thought that I was past the initial feelings. But at rugby training today, I burst into tears, and my coach sent me home, so I drove to a beach and I cried. I was feeling so much that I honestly can't describe my emotions. I eventually fell asleep in my car. Now I'm here hoping that I can get advice on how to talk to my dad about it, because I'm scared about how he will react. I don't want my dad to be sad because he does so much for me, but I'm not strong like him. I'm really struggling. My question is, how can I approach this conversation with my dad about my stepmom hating me, or should I tell him at all? And now in the comments, record her. I am dead effing serious. Not once. Like look into spy crap and record her when he's not around. Your father married a predatory, abusive narcissist who is lying to him for security. The only way to remotely get him to believe you is to have some actual evidence, because she straight up engineered this to abuse you and keep him unaware of it. That is exactly what I was going to suggest. Dad is unlikely to believe OP fully when it's been so many years of them getting along great. People aren't great at shredding everything they thought they knew about someone and a situation without undeniable cold evidence staring them in the face. And it is guaranteed that someone as manipulative as her will gaslight dad and throw OP under the bus. Providing video evidence is probably the only way dad will believe OP to the level required, sadly. And OP says, I will try. Currently, right now, I'm not in a stable mindset, and the thought of getting evidence like recording is making me feel sick. I know if I don't do anything that it'll get worse and be my fault, so I really appreciate this advice. Sunshine, it's not 100% your fault. I'm realizing this is painful for you. Try not to be hard on yourself. Your stepmom is a funk knuckle, and your dad needs to know. I agree with recording her. I also think if you have a counselor at the school, it's not a bad idea to go and talk with them. 
They might not be able to directly fix the issue, but I'm sure they can help you emotionally deal with this while you figure out how to get your dad to understand what's happening. Now back up to the post, there is an edit. Someone questioned my dad's age, and I'm sorry, but it was supposed to be 42, but I can't change it. Thank you everyone that provided advice and kind words. It means a lot to me. I have read every comment and have an idea on how to approach this situation. I'm honestly terrified of the outcome being negative, but the encouragement and support are making this a bit easier to deal with. I am going to talk to my dad on Sunday and show him this post. I hope it goes well, and I hope all of you stay safe and take care. Edit 2. I'm not sure that I'm able to do what I plan to do because Amy just took my car keys away and she wants my phone, but I won't give it to her, so she is waiting for my dad to take it off of me because apparently I'm doing drugs. But I told her I'm not, I've been at the beach. I'm not sure, but I just wanted to stop because I can't handle it. I'm sorry. And now, onto the update. For all the support and advice I received, I really appreciate and am wholeheartedly so grateful for all of those who DM'd me to see how I was. Thank you. This will be long because a lot happened, but many things are still not resolved. Trigger warning? I will mention self-harm, so please, if it might trigger you, please don't read further. I wish I was able to say that I followed the advice that was provided, and now everything is better. But some things in life don't play out the way that we want it to, and we can either let it destroy us or make us better. After writing my edits where my stepmom was taking my things away and assuming that I was on drugs, I started recording on my phone, and she said a lot through the door many things about my mum and me, and just plain hateful words that I don't want to repeat on here. I fell asleep while I was barricading the door with my body when my dad demanded me to open the door. At this point, I don't remember much of what happened, but my stepmom told me that I had to leave the house, and my dad agreed. I didn't know who to call, but I decided to call my coach and he picked me up, and I was a crying mess. He didn't ask any questions, but just told me that I was safe, and if I need to talk, he was here for me. I stayed over one night, when the next day, Dad picked me up. Stepmom was not at home when we got there. Dad told me that we needed to talk. We had breakfast, and my dad spoke to me about many things my stepmother told him, and I couldn't believe all the lies she told him. It was a long talk, but in summary, it was... My use of drugs and alcohol, how I disrespect her in our home... I don't do my responsibilities like chores at home. I'm nasty to her when dad is not around. He asked me why I was acting like this and if I had a problem with stepmom that I should have spoken to him. I let him talk and when he was crying and asked if I had anything to say, I was so lost for words that I knew that whatever I said, my dad was on my stepmom's side. So I told him that I wanted him to watch the recording of the incident that I can send through as an email attachment and the link to my Reddit post, and then we can talk more. I also said that I didn't want to be here when he was reading and watching, so I'll go for a drive, and he can text me when he's done and is ready to talk. He was hesitant at first, but I told him that it was important to me, so he agreed and left in my car to the beach and I sent him the email with the video attached and the link to my Reddit post. I don't know how long I waited, but many thoughts were going through my head. I was missing my mum so much, and what if my dad still sided with my stepmom? What can I do now? I then fell asleep at the beach spot and was woken up by a police officer knocking on my car door and asking for my name. After confirming my name, he advised me to get out of my car and to hand over my keys to him and to follow him to his car. He then handcuffed me and assured me that I wasn't in trouble, but that this was a welfare check because someone made a call that I was possibly suicidal. I didn't talk after he told me that, and all I remember was just crying. He made me sit in the back of the police car until the ambulance came, and they took me to the hospital. I was asked many questions, and was evaluated, and was told that I was depressed and may have extreme anxiety. The physician did say that I might have other things, but will require further testing and some sessions with a psychiatrist. My dad came and visited me while in hospital, and when I saw him, he looked really tired. When he spoke, it sounded like he was crying, and he told me that he called the police on me because of the video recording that I did. 
He heard everything my stepmom said to me, but he also saw my cuts on my thighs and was scared and thought the worst. Honestly, I never watched the video, so I didn't know my thighs were visible. After our cry, we spoke about a few things. I told my dad that I don't feel comfortable living with stepmom after everything she has said and done to me over the years, and I'm not sure that I can handle being around her because I don't trust her. We spoke about arrangements, and knowing my dad still loves my stepmom, and I didn't want him to choose between us. I told him that I could talk to Coach if I could stay with him, and after calling him, he agreed. I've also been admitted to an agency that will support me because I am mentally unwell. I have been to one session and am waiting on another evaluation to be done on me and some testings with my GP so they can diagnose me. I'm currently staying with my rugby coach who has been an amazing pillar. He has set out some house rules, but I respect the fella and don't mind following them. My coach even set a date next week for me and dad to catch up on. My coach is an awesome dude. I previously thought of him as just a coach who wanted our rugby team to win, but when he allowed me to stay over, he showed so much care for me, and I saw a different side of him, and understand how much he cares for my team. He has a lovely wife, but I'm kinda anxious whenever it's just me and her at their house. That's it right now. My dad lives at home with my stepmom, and is trying to sort that out. I have many appointments to get the help that I need, and a lot of schoolwork to catch up on, and rugby trainings to attend. I've taken a leave of absence from my Macca's job. I'm gonna miss going to the beach for a while, but I understand that it's not a forever thing, so I hope that the next time I go there, I'm not crying my eyes out. I'm kinda working on being okay away from my dad and stepmom after those of you who shared your similar experiences. Someday I will be okay. Thank you all who advised me and encouraged me. Those who reached out through DM, thank you for the kind words and reaching out. I'm not sure if I'll update again, but maybe I'll let you know if something happens in the future. Take care everyone. Also be kind to one another, and most of all, be kind to yourself cause you deserve it. And now in the comments, everyone needs a coach like him in their life. Dad failed his role and is still staying with the stepmom? I bet he wouldn't have believed OP if he hadn't recorded anything. The saddest part is how much OP looks up to his dad. The poor kid thinks, or is trying to convince himself, that his dad is doing right by him by allowing him to stay with his coach. This kid doesn't even know what real parental love feels like. It is so, so sad. If I've learned anything from Reddit, it's that a shocking number of parents choose romantic relationships over their own children. It is awful. OP's dad is a piece of crap, and his stepmom is even worse. Poor kid. Truly, what an unrepentant trash pile of a human. Imagine finding out your wife is abusing your kid, and thinking the solution is to kick your kid onto the couch of a random adult that you barely know, so you can stay with your child abusing wife in peace. F this guy. Yeah, even if the stepmom and kid were equally guilty of something, your underage child should take precedent as he is underage. On top of that, the stepmom is a monster. I can never understand this centrist attitude of never picking a side, because it's ultimately punishing the innocent. What a joke of a parent. So after all the trauma the stepmom caused, OP's dad didn't kick her out immediately and is still living with her trying to sort things out? What a piece of crap. OP has been suffering for years, and his father is only upset now because his ideal family dream is shattered. OP deserves better parents. His stepmom is an abuser, and his dad is an enabler. I hope OP gets karmic justice, and maybe even gets to see it unfold right in front of his eyes. What a shit show. Am I the asshole for refusing to stop seeing my daughter over her sister? I, 56 female, and my husband Kurt, 59 male, have two daughters, Ruth, 32, and June, 30. Eight years ago, Ruth split up with her college boyfriend Adam, 32. They had been together since she was 20 slash 21, and it was as serious as a college relationship could be. About five years ago, June announced that she reconnected with Adam at some alumni get-together. They had all gone to the same university, and that they were now dating. Of course, Kurt and I were shocked that she would do this, despite her sister's history with him. But she insisted that they were in love, and that she can't help that, 
and that Ruth and Adam hadn't been together in years, so she hasn't done anything wrong. Ruth understandably was enraged over it. She said she was done with June and would never see her again. This broke me. They were so close growing up, and I prayed every day that they would reconcile, but I accepted they're adults who can make their own choices, and we have no say. Kurt and I were also very disappointed with June, and told her off many times, but after she proved that there was never any cheating involved while Ruth and Adam were together, things between us settled down. Out of respect for Ruth's feelings, we never brought the girls together again. Ruth and June visit us separately, and still aren't on speaking terms after five years, but we maintained our relationships. Now, June and Adam are married. Ruth has also moved on with a lovely boy. Coincidentally, both girls are expecting their first child, although Ruth's date is a little earlier. I can't put into words how excited we are to be grandparents and adore both these children. I've been supportive and as involved with both of our daughter's pregnancies as they want. However, last week, Ruth drops a bomb on us. She said that if we ever see June again or her baby, she won't allow us into the child's life. This shattered me. It has kept me up every night. The thought of either of my grandchildren being deprived of loving grandparents is agonizing. I know Ruth was deeply hurt by June's actions, but I don't know if we should be punished just for not cutting off our kid. How can any parent even consider disowning a child? We begged her to reconsider and said our love for them both isn't conditional and we can't just stop loving one, but she's adamant. I don't want to accept Ruth's terms, as it seems like no matter what we decide, we're going to lose a daughter and grandchild. So I'd rather it not happen because we outright chose it. But I also don't want Ruth to believe that we'd just drop her in favor of June, because again, the thought crushes me. Would I be the asshole if I don't comply with Ruth's ultimatum? I can personally understand both sides of the argument on this one. If Ruth did think that it was enough of a betrayal of her trust, that she goes completely no contact with her sister, that's understandable. Because yeah, the thought of it to me, it's gross. It does kind of feel like a weird betrayal in a way, and it does seem that Ruth has taken it that way. Though where I do find issue in this situation is the ultimatum that Ruth has set. I don't think that's fair to OP. To me, OP exists outside of this issue between the two sisters, and I don't think it's necessary or fair to put an ultimatum on OP for this. I'm gonna say OP's not an asshole for this situation, and I genuinely think that Ruth is being an asshole by putting this on OP. And now in the comments, not the asshole. She's just making a final bid for control and using the baby as leverage. What happened to Ruth sucks, but she shouldn't be trying to take out her feelings on you guys who sound like loving parents. Tell her that you don't like the ultimatum and leave the door open should she change her mind. It's kind of weird that she's still not over it after five years though, especially given the time between both relationships and the fact they are married now. Maybe I'm being naive having never been in a similar situation, but that just sits weird with me. I wonder what Ruth's partner thinks about it, if she has one. She can be over the ex, that doesn't mean that she has to be willing to associate with someone who would betray other people in the way that she sees the situation. OP isn't asking Ruth to play happy family with June or to be a part in her nibbling's life. The daughters have not spoken in years and OP accepts this. Ruth is being cruel and vindictive towards her parents for no reason. How does it impact her if mom has a totally independent relationship with her other daughter and grandchild? This is unhinged and OP should do as original commenter suggests. Don't go along with this bizarre ultimatum and leave the door open for a relationship with Ruth if she can get her head on straight. Not the asshole. Tell Ruth that you will never turn your back on any of your children and that she is making the choice to not be a part of your life. Let her know that your door is always open and as much as it hurts, continue to send cards, Christmas and birthday presents to your grandchild. She will most likely come around, but even if she doesn't, you will know that you kept the lines of communication open while respecting her boundaries. And OP replies, I probably sound crazy, but thinking of this almost breaks my heart most of all. I know a few people who have been denied access to their grandkids who do this. 
The thought of sending gifts, cards, money, photos, etc. that will all end up in some dusty box in an attic somewhere that our grandchild may never see absolutely kills me. They will never know how much we love them and yearn for them. I've wondered if Ruth would just throw everything away and there wouldn't even be any proof that we sent them or cared at all. If she asks us to stop sending them, we would have to comply. But even if we get to shower June's child with love, I can never not think of the fact that we can't do the same for Ruth. Someone replies to OP, don't send the money, put it in an account. So you aren't an asshole. But after reading all these comments, I don't think Ruth is either. Everyone has a different take on exes, but I can't imagine ever dating an ex of my sister, and I mean any ex at all, no matter how long ago or how short a time they dated. June and Adam actively sought out a relationship, both knowing the history of Ruth. That's weird. It's really not that hard to not fall in love with your sister's ex or your ex's sister, and I have a feeling that there are more dynamics at play if both of them allowed this relationship in the first place. For example, I don't know a decent man who would feel comfortable for being the reason an entire family was fractured. You did a good job of keeping them separate, but the reality is that Ruth feels that June committed a huge betrayal, and you agree with that, and has suffered zero consequences for it. She got the guy, now the kid, and you are all just as active and accommodating in her life as you were before. Now that Ruth is having a child, she's probably looking at the lens of having this estranged sister and always keeping things separate, etc. June is also having a child, which feels very final. This man and her sister will always be together, meaning she will always have to deal with this betrayal and there is no way back. I'm not saying that you should cut June off, because I don't think you should, I just appreciate the deep pain Ruth has been through. And by just putting up a divider between the two of them and hoping time would fix things, Ruth just sat in that pain. I honestly don't think that you have a way forward with both families, but I see in the comments that you have spoken to June and have talked to Adam before. And your tone is that he's a great guy, and so to me, I think you should think long and hard about how Ruth might just be vocalizing what you have already done, which is pick June over her already. And even if you feel that you haven't done that, the reality is, Ruth doesn't want to live like this anymore. So just decline her request to cut off June, tell her you will always be there for her, and grieve. And I can't help but point out that neither Ruth nor you started this, and the only two people who come out with zero wounds are the two people who actually did create this conflict in the first place. And now back up to the post, we have an edit. Thank you to everyone for commiserating with this situation. I wish I could say that it's helped me feel better, but right now it feels like nothing ever will. One of my babies hates the other. It broke me, but I accepted it. Now I'm faced with losing one of them no matter what. Entirely too many comments to respond to individually, so I just want to answer some of the most common questions here. Why did Ruth and Adam split up? Ruth left Adam because it just wasn't working. He was immature and said and did things that irritated her. Mostly lots of minor things adding up. She said that there was never any abuse, nor cheating, but it was the right decision for herself. He was a nice enough boy, but he definitely had some growing up to do at the time. I did feel very badly for Ruth because she had invested a good few years into the relationship for someone so young, but agreed that it was the right decision. Did we ever support Ruth? Ruth stayed with us for a few months when it first happened. Not just because of this, there were other reasons, and we were there for her and comforted her the whole time. Because she was so angry, we had asked June to not visit until she left. We still talked to her and met a couple of times in public places though. We made it known that this hurt her sister, and we were disappointed she didn't think of this. June understood and agreed with us supporting Ruth. She expressed sadness over losing her sister, but we clearly told her it was Ruth's decision to cut her off. Whether one thinks June did nothing wrong or not, it is untrue to say that there were never any consequences for this. She is sad to this day that she has lost her sister and knows that she has to accept and live with it. Did June ever apologize to Ruth? Both girls have confirmed that June reached out a few times over the years to apologize. No one put her up to it. Ruth didn't forgive her, and she's well within her rights not to, and we understand that no one can or should make her accept the apology. 
why don't we just cut off Adam? He's June's husband and the father of our second grandchild. They're a package deal now. Once we cut him off, we risk losing June and our grandchild anyway, which is the same as what I'm trying to prevent with Ruth. Some commenters say that in letting June stay in our lives after this, I already chose her and asked why I didn't cut her off from the start. I am baffled that anyone would suggest I could just disown a child so easily, like she was never ours. Not disowning June doesn't mean that I chose to be her mother over Ruth's. I never abandoned Ruth and never will. Ruth has thanked us for our support in the past. She said she was fine with how we'd arranged things for the last five years. As long as she never had to see June, she was happy seeing us and everything was normal between us. It is only now that she wants us to disown June. Some say she should have cut us off years ago for still loving June. She has said many times that her goal isn't to cut us off. She loves us and wants us to be involved with her child, but that she can't stand June or her baby getting the same love and care from us because she thinks she doesn't deserve it. I want to add that if Adam had ever abused or cheated on Ruth, we certainly would have gone no contact, or at least low contact with them. But that's not what happened, and both girls used to repeatedly tell us that what happened between them had nothing to do with us. So yes, I did keep my relationship with both daughters. I don't regret it. Because, as heartbreaking as this is, willingly cutting off either of them, outside of the circumstances I mentioned, is unfathomable to me or their father. Thank you again to everyone for their good wishes, and for suggesting family therapy. I will try to bring it up with Ruth and my husband. We suggested it when things initially happened, but dropped it when she said no. And now, on to the update. Hello again. Thank you all for the support and advice on my first post. A lot has happened, so I think I should provide an update. We followed the advice and told Ruth that if she decided to go no contact, we would comply. But we could never willingly cut either of them off. We again begged her to reconsider and reiterated that we were willing to go do family therapy, that we would do all we could to keep her and June apart, anything to make it work. She said she still wasn't happy that June and her baby would stay in our lives, but she would think about it. Kurt and I also looked into opening an account for Ruth's child, but didn't go through with it yet in hopes that things could turn around. Days went by. We didn't hear back from Ruth. It was agony. And then we get a call from June. She'd gotten wind of what was happening through mutual family. She drove to Ruth herself. No one put her up to this and she was prepared for Ruth to kick her out anyway. Once she was there, she apologized again and begged her not to do this. She said she could accept Ruth wanting nothing to do with her, but not to punish us because of it, especially since they both knew that cutting us off would cost her child-loving grandparents. Shockingly, Ruth didn't kick her out. She let her in, and they both had a long, tearful argument slash fight. They even hugged a few times. I'm foggy on details, but I suspect pregnancy hormones played a huge role here. I can't tell you how panicked I was hearing this story, because it could have been so risky for them both. They haven't exactly made up, and Ruth didn't forgive June, but she admitted to her that her husband, Owen, has actually been trying to convince her to go to couples counseling and individual therapy as well. Apparently, since Ruth's pregnancy, some troubling qualities that he was able to manage previously were exacerbated. She was becoming controlling and paranoid, and he was pleading with her to get help so they could be in a good place once the baby was born. June's visit was the final straw, and Ruth broke down and agreed. Ruth called us later. She corroborated June's story and accepted our therapy offer. She still has one condition. She wants Owen there if June has to attend any sessions, and she doesn't want Adam present at all. We all agreed. The first session is in a few days. I can barely keep it together that I'll see both my babies in the same room for the first time in forever. It has been so stressful, but I can finally see some light. I haven't lost our daughters. Kurt and I are going to put everything into keeping our family together. I'm not going to be naive and assume everything will be fine now, but I am hopeful. I want to thank everyone again for all the comfort and help. 
To those who sent kind DMs sharing their similar situations, I truly appreciate your solidarity. As for those who sent DMs calling one or both of my daughters tramps and hoping that they lose their unborn babies, I can only hope that nothing abhorrent in your lives is driving you to be so miserable as to wish such heinous things on a stranger. And now in the comments. OP, I am so heartened to read this. Something good has come out of a really rough thing, and everyone is being very brave in trying to address this. I'm so glad that you found some support here, and June is so very brave. Hugs to all of you. Very happy that Ruth is getting help, and some attempt at repairing their sisterly relationship is happening. And OP replies, Thank you so much. Yes, both my daughters always have been very headstrong. Clearly. And it's always great when good things come out of those qualities. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Thanks for the update. I have two tiny daughters, and would be heartbroken if they ever fight like this. I hope your family can heal and be put back together. It would be nice if the cousins could grow up together. And OP says, Thank you so much for understanding. Both my grandkids growing up with their cousins would be like a dream come true. But I'm trying to control those thoughts because I don't want to take for granted that it'll happen if either of my daughters don't want it. It was so difficult to get comments and even messages ordering me to choose one daughter over the other, or saying that I already chose one over the other simply because I didn't disown her. People may as well ask me to choose which leg I'd rather amputate. I hope your little girls grow up close and happy forever. I'm glad to hear that there is possible family reunification. It sounds like Ruth might be in a rough spot with the pregnancy and possibly postpartum once the baby arrives. I'm also glad that Owen is watching for this because postpartum depression can be very scary and impacts a lot of women and has been a bit misrepresented. And OP says, I completely agree with you. I'm grateful that she's found such a loving partner and I'm proud of her for getting help and taking this potential issue seriously. And our next story is actually the final update of a story that we covered a few days ago. Update, am I the asshole for flipping out on my fiance for canceling all the vegan food options from our wedding food menu behind my back? So, the talk didn't go well. I waited for him to come home so we could have a final conversation about it, but he still insisted on his stance. For more details, his family are a bit on the heavy side. Most of them are obese. Nothing wrong with that. They are perfectly within their right to decide how to live, but they get easily offended at the mention of the words weight and food. I tried so hard to focus on the issue at hand, but I noticed there was a pattern of this behavior. He said that it wasn't true, and that this was just an attempt for me to throw past conflicts at him in order to win the current one. He claimed that he tried to reason with me about why and how his guests might see those vegan options as offensive. Also said that his family loved food and consider it a big deal, and how he didn't want his family to feel like there is certain options that they couldn't touch, and feel that there is differences in how I treat them versus how I treat my family. He then went on to explain how it's just an event and how my family should just accept what's on the menu and if they felt inconvenienced, so what? It's just a one-time thing. They're not gonna die if they had salad and appetizers. What he said wasn't a good enough reason for me because his folks are gonna think and say what they want. But at the end of the day, it is my wedding. And to be honest, realizing that my partner himself thinks that it's okay to steamroll my opinions and decisions simply because he's prioritizing others and their opinions over me was really upsetting and not something that could be looked past. Normally, I'm a person of rational discussions and compromises. I am all about compromises. I had compromised on much bigger matters than just food. But like people said, it's not about the food anymore, if it ever was. Like he would literally lose nothing if he let me have what I wanted. But apparently he was willing to lose it all over this, which is fine by me. I gave him back the ring and called everything off. I just couldn't envision myself living like this any longer, having to walk on eggshells for his family, and letting him basically override my opinions and have the final say no matter what. Marriage is about compromise, 
And here, he has nothing to lose, yet chose to do this to me and my family. Mind you, this is my first serious relationship, and I didn't know what to expect. But it's safe to say that he and his mum and family did make it feel like I was taking crazy pills on many, many occasions. So that's that. Last thing he said was that I chose my family over him and ended everything between us for the sake of keeping him happy. Decision's been made and it's done. Just wanted to give an update for those who wanted it. Thank you so much for your endless stream of advice and support. And now in the comments, good for you. Marriage is about compromise, and it doesn't sound like your ex is interested in compromising or even letting you have a say in things. That isn't a partnership. And OP replies, thank you, and you're right. Honestly, I felt kind of hesitant about posting an update. In fact, I was hesitant about posting my situation as a whole. Normally, I'm not the type to share my private business online, but I was desperate. Like I said, there were times where his family made me feel like I was taking crazy pills. Honestly, I'm gonna say this anyway, I hate them. They have always made me feel like an outsider and a stranger, never really warmed up to me, and instead, pretended to like me. But it was obvious that they resented me. They claim that I'm a covert fat phobic, but in reality, I got mocked, along with my family, for being underweight due to health issues that I had mentioned before. Don't even get me started on ex-future mother-in-law, though I feel as though I've got to let it all out and vent. You go, girl. Dude 100% laid out a roadmap where only his opinion matters and yours is irrelevant. This probably wasn't the first time, but it for sure would not be the last. And OP says, Exactly. Like I said, I had noticed a pattern of this behavior, but kept rationalizing it, which was a huge mistake on my part. It has been utter torture trying to please him and his family. I'm an emotional mess right now, but there is this little voice of reassurance telling me that I've gone through the worst and survived it. I'm so thankful that this happened. It helped me see things clearer. It's just an event. My family should just accept what's on the menu. Did he even hear himself talking? His family sounds like the type who zeroes in on the person who only wants oatmeal for breakfast and thinks that that person is trying to shame them. It was so crazy because what he's saying is unfair to his family would be literally true for hers if they went with his plan. Like, there were certain options his family couldn't touch? What? It is absolutely mind-boggling that he doesn't understand the hypocrisy here. Good for her for calling this off. That marriage would have been a disaster. I, female 18, am dating a guy, male 21, that seems really nice, but watches male motivation influences. So last week, I went on a date with a guy that I met on Tinder. For our first date, we went to have dinner, and it went great. He was funny, dressed up really nicely, has this beautiful smile, and paid for everything. After that, he drove me home in his car, and we arranged another date. I wanted to meet him again as soon as possible. Four days forward, and the second date is going really well, as expected. But after a while, we somehow get onto the topic of influences we like to watch when he tells me that he enjoys watching people like Jordan Peterson, Joe Rogan, Sneeko, and all these other male motivation influences. These are the only ones that I knew, but he probably named more. He also said that he watches Andrew Tate content on TikTok because it's funny. Really? You think misogyny's funny? My heart sunk when I heard these names, and my face was visibly disgusted. He asked me if anything was wrong, but I pretended everything was fine, and I changed the subject, although for the rest of the date I had this really uncomfortable feeling in my stomach, and I just wanted to leave. He seems like a great guy, but I'm skeptical of how he's going to act down the line if we're in a relationship while he's listening to these influences daily. I've arranged another date with him in two weeks, but I'm confused at this point what to do. What do you guys think I should do? Am I over-exaggerating, or is this a bullet I should dodge? If it were me OP, I would just make up an excuse and say, hey, you're a great guy, but I'm really not feeling it with you. I had a lot of fun over our last two dates, but I don't wish to continue further with this. And leave it at that, because to me, that seems like a deal breaker. And it's completely okay for you to do that. There is nothing wrong with that. More power to you. Now in the comments, 
You are literally going on a few dates with someone who has different values and beliefs. Just say that you aren't interested, wish him well, and move on with your life. I think this is the answer. Incompatible values are some of the hardest things to overcome. I don't know any of those guys except Joe Rogan and Andrew Tate. Joe Rogan, I can tolerate as long as they're not idolizing him, but Andrew Tate? Red flags. Run away. He is outwardly outspoken about how he sees women as possessions and is involved in human trafficking. He's disgusting. Yeah, plus the fact that he's very open about the fact that he moved to Romania because he can get away with basically everything. I'm Romanian, and the laws aren't the strictest, but his reasoning is so screwed up. Moreover, misogyny is so tolerated and promoted in Eastern European countries, and the fact that he moved to one speaks volumes about how serious he is in his content. You have two options. A. Call it off now so you don't waste any more time. B. Bring it up on the third date to see what he has to say. If you don't care that much, choose A. If you want to give him a chance to explain himself, choose B. Sometimes giving people the benefit of the doubt and having a chat about it allows that person to say what you want to hear. He will likely weasel his way out of it and chalk it up to the content being cringy, and that's why he watches it. It's a huge red flag, and it would make me steer clear of him. Don't go on the third date. Consider yourself lucky that he told you who he regards as role models so early on, and that you're able to make a decision before he sucks you into a relationship. Or worse, gets you in the sack, and then ghosts you. If he watches anything Andrew Tate puts out there, you best believe he has zero respect for women. And now, on to the update. Hey everyone, my last post kind of blew up. Thanks for all the advice. Unfortunately, it was deleted for some reasons related to reaching the max amount of comments. Anyway, I decided to call him a few days ago to talk, and made it very clear to him that it makes me very uncomfortable that he listens to these kinds of influences, and that he should stop watching them if he wants to have a relationship with me in the future. He then proceeded to say that this is insanity, that I am overreacting, that I'm acting exactly like those women that these influencers are making fun of, and that I should not be demanding this type of stuff this early on, while bringing nothing to the table. After that, we argued for a bit, and he ended the call by saying he's glad that he dodged this bullet. I blocked him after that, and we haven't spoken since. He somehow made me feel like I'm the asshole in this situation, but I know that what I asked of him was not anything weird or shallow. I'm so confused at this point. What do you guys think? Anyway, that was my update. If you still have any questions or advice, feel free to leave a comment. Now in the comments, girl, all you did was reinforce what these people are telling him. I'm glad you ended it, but demanding things like that wasn't the way to go about it. Giving a guy an ultimatum after the second date is kind of insane. You can reinforce your boundaries and not deal with it without going off like that. I don't want to go on another date, we are incompatible. That is all you had to do. If he wanted more explanation, just say, I don't agree with those influences. They make me uncomfortable, and I don't think our values will line up. You did come off kind of crazy with how you did it. He wasn't wrong in pointing out that he dodged a bullet. You've got some growing up to do. You can't control people. I got hit on recently by a guy who told me he saves lives as a motivational coach for men with social anxiety. He was hitting all the social cues. Flattering, intense eye contact, casual, non-offensive shoulder touches, and I was expecting a carload of his students to be following us. It was a bit funny, as he was basically chasing me along as I walked to an appointment, but I'm glad that I had an office to duck into and not my home. Motivational coach for men with social anxiety? Translation, he's a pickup artist coach. Anyone that can actually help me with social anxiety would be called a licensed therapist or psychiatrist. A note for the younger people, if someone shows red flags on the second date, just dump them. Don't stress yourself out. Hell, keep that idea for at least the first six months if the red flags are this red. At least. I promise you, that person isn't your soulmate if you have to say some crap like this, just dump them. A second date isn't the time to be like, uh, but I liked him so much. Okay, liked is the key word there. Not everyone deserves a second chance, and not every potential relationship deserves effort. It is more often better to just cut your losses. My husband isn't a perfect man, but he wasn't tossing out red flags. 
If they are, just run. Don't get caught in the sunken cost fallacy or the toxically optimistic, but I could change them mentality. Just run. You'll be happier, and it's better to be happy alone than miserable with some douche. Our next post is titled, Am I the asshole for being upset that my wealthy boyfriend got me a cheap gift? So my, 21 female, boyfriend, 21 male, comes from a wealthy family, and I'm from a middle class family. His family went on a cruise, and all the siblings and their significant others came along. I was happy to be there, and very grateful that his parents invited me. At one point, everyone was sitting down together, and my boyfriend started bringing out gifts. His parents and siblings and their significant others got things like watches, dresses, fine wines, and other very clearly expensive things. When he got to me, he gave me one of those plastic bracelets with their company name on it. You can get those at the company's main headquarters for free. I was a little taken aback and a little embarrassed, but didn't want to be rude. Everyone was kind of looking at me in a way that they were both amused and also pitiful. I didn't want to complain, so I said thanks and I moved on. When we got outside, I asked my boyfriend what that was about, and he told me to be grateful and stop complaining because he always gets me nice gifts, which is true. I just stopped pushing it because I feel like I was being selfish there, and he did have a point. I feel like what he did was very degrading. He could have gotten me no gift at all, and that would have been less humiliating. I feel like trash for feeling this way, but he's always been mindful, and I don't understand why he did that. It made me feel cheap in front of everyone. I don't know, am I the asshole for feeling this way and even bringing it up? Edit, to address some of the commonly asked questions, me and my boyfriend have been dating for two years. His family and I get along very well. His parents paid for the cruise for everyone. Edit two, so someone pointed out that it's actually called a yacht and not a cruise? It's his family's yacht and his parents paid for us, meaning that they paid for the chefs, butlers, and the plane tickets to come out to that place. I didn't know that there was a difference. Minor detail, but yeah. I think you're not the asshole considering the circumstances of this situation. Absolutely, no gift would have been better than what he gave you in front of everyone else there. This man is not blind. This man should be self-aware of the expectations of gifts and the social circle that he is in, which sounds to be exorbitantly wealthy. This is a social faux pas. This is degrading. This is not a good look on you, nor him. I would feel the same as you are if I were to be put in this situation, OP. I wouldn't feel appreciated. I feel like he's very much putting me down in front of his family. I don't think we can judge from this why he did this to you, but I feel bad for you, and I don't think you're an asshole for this. I think he is. And now in the comments, not the asshole. Normally I'd vote the other way and have a chat about entitlement, but holy crap girl, that was a pointed dig at you designed to make you feel less than. He did it publicly and in front of all of his family. I would nope the F out of that relationship. It's not about the cost of the gift, it's about everything else. Honestly, I think it's not about the cost of the gift. Stop supplying when it's something that is A, free, and B, everyone present knows that it's free and could go get one by themselves anytime they wanted. And OP says, the thing is, he's always been great. We've been dating for two years and he's never tried to make me feel less than. Maybe he forgot a gift? Someone suggested that. I want to believe that. I understand that you want to believe that, but why remember everyone and forget you? That is weird after two years too. Maybe just let it rest for a bit. See if he explains later and ask if he does not. If he really forgot, that would be embarrassing to admit. If he's otherwise a caring boyfriend, I would leave it for a day. Let him roast is the best way to get someone who's easily gets defensive out of their shell, in my experience. Act nice and cordial towards him, and don't be petty or give him more reasons to retract in his shell. If after 24 hours, he doesn't bring it up himself, ask him if you guys could talk and say, I appreciate the thought behind the present, but it hurt a little that the present was so impersonal, and I felt a little awkward because I felt other people were wondering too. Was there a reason why the present was rushed? I know it's hard being the bigger person when you know that he was a dick, but his defensiveness screams, I'm embarrassed about myself, I know I screwed up, and I'm trying to hide my weakness, rather than, I'm just a general dick. 
This is also going by your statement that he is usually a nice boyfriend. Not the asshole. Even though his family might be acting very nice towards you, they may be suspicious that you're only with your boyfriend for money. So this might have been a test and or a way of him proving to them that you don't care about material things. Yeah, it totally could have been a test. The problem is, tests like that aren't okay and only serve to show the character of the one performing it, not the one being tested. Yes and no. I can see the perspective of the family if it was a test, but the boyfriend went about it horribly. A gift lacking in monetary value should still be meaningful and sentimental. If the girlfriend chucked a fit at that, well then, that's the test working I guess. But here the boyfriend got an absolutely rubbish gift of no value to anyone, and the girlfriend was rightfully offended. And now onto the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all your comments and theories. Some of them made me cry, some of them made me laugh, and some of them made me angry and confused. All of them helped me gain confidence to talk to my boyfriend about the situation. I straight up asked him about what went through his mind when he did that. I told him I've been thinking about it ever since we came back from the trip. Why was he even giving out gifts? Why did he give me that? Why did he think that it was okay? Actually, no one here guessed it right, and neither did I. He was giving out gifts because he wanted to give me a big gift, and I was supposed to be the last one. He actually managed to set up a day with me and this adorable cat that I follow on TikTok. The owner lives close near the harbor that we'd be stopping at, and I loved this cat since 2020 when we first started dating. I still stalk the page regularly. But the owner had backed out last minute, even after charging a crap ton. We were supposed to meet soon, but now he didn't have a gift for me and basically just got scammed. He said what he did was stupid, and he just took a bracelet out last minute to save face. But he realizes now that it was stupid. As for his comment, he apologized and said that he has no excuse. He said he was more angry with himself and the cat owner and took it out on me. I understood and forgave him because it was out of character and he knew that he wanted to do something nice for me. All's well that ends well, guys. We're moving past this. It sucks that I can't meet the little kitty, but this is a story that I will always remember. And now in the comments, weird as hell, but not the strangest thing that I've read on Reddit today. I hope they start a court case against the scammer. When I first read the original post, I was sure that it was going to be some weird power play. Very sweet to the boyfriend for trying to organize something so special. Yeah, I hope they pursue a court case against the scammer too. I'm a bit skeptical about the story, and pushing for a court case is the only thing that would ease the doubt. I've got to say, there is a huge difference between a cruise and a private yacht. I know, she doesn't know what a cruise is? Like, you can go on a cruise for a couple hundred. A private yacht with all the crew described is like a couple hundred thousand per week. I looked it up once out of curiosity. I think she knows what a cruise is, but didn't realize there was a different word for a private yacht. It might even be a super yacht, which would make the confusion make more sense. Like, I didn't realize that calling something a sports car equals supercar. I didn't even know what a supercar was. I was just calling all of them sports cars. Panicking and giving a garbage bracelet is hilarious and understandable. Telling her to be grateful and to stop complaining is genuinely shitty behavior. Yeah, that's the only thing that I didn't like at all. He screwed up, and when she asked, instead of validating her, he doubled down. All's well, it's not too big of a problem, just sucky. He could have just told the truth. He had something planned, it fell through, and he will make it up to her. But instead, he acts like a dick, and then embarrassed her in front of his family too. Hmm. Our next post is titled, I told my wife I would pick the kids over her any day. I have always been excited to be a father, and I wanted to make sure my child has a memorable childhood. So I started reading books and asking older men how they raised their kids and the mistakes they made. One of the things they told me was that they regret not spending more time with their kids. I can relate to that because my father was never really there for me before he left. So every day since my baby could crawl, I would play with him after work until he goes to sleep. On weekends, I would take him on a walk in his stroller and I would play the piano for him when he gets back. I was really doing my best to make him happy, and I thought my wife would be happy too. 
but she wasn't. Yesterday, we had an argument, and she complained about how I'm not spending time with her anymore. I told her the reason we don't go on dates and we don't travel like we used to is because the baby is our priority now, and when he grows up, we'll have all the time in the world to ourselves. She then asked me to choose between her and the baby, and that's when I walked out. I came back a few hours later to get some sleep after playing with the baby, and that's when I replied to her and said, I would pick the kid over you any time, any day. I love my wife, we were friends for almost 14 years before we got married, but we are also adults now and have responsibilities. Wow, I'm really getting a lot of hate and insults in my DMs. I'll talk to my wife later and we'll make a deal. Thanks for some of the really good advice here. I'm 26, and not only is this my first relationship, it's also my first taste of fatherhood, so I won't act like I know it all. My dad isn't here anymore, so I'm working this out on my own, and so far, the majority of the comments are people saying they hope my wife divorces me. But God is my strength, and I know that he won't put me to shame like he said in his words. And now in the comments, I hear what you're saying, in fact, if there's any emergency or anything wrong, you'd be a father to your kids before a husband to your wife. But for the rest of the time, there has to be a balance. Balance is the key. Not only for OP's marriage, but your child too. OP is the example of what a good relationship should be to his child. If he neglects the emotional needs of his partner, his child may pick up on that and think neglect in a relationship is normal. I know their child is young, so it's not a big deal right now, but long term, these examples matter. Might also just be taking her presence for granted. Then when she gets fed up of being neglected, she may ask for a divorce, which would screw up the child's parenting experience. And you don't realize how much you miss something until it's gone, so likely after a divorce, Opie would see how much he effed up and miss his wife. Hopefully he takes some advice from the comments and betters his situation. A divorce would be bad for everyone involved, and he's trying to be a good dad. So hopefully it all works out, and he learns balance. This is such a bizarre black and white perspective on parenting. Why on earth should you stop nurturing your relationship with your wife, because you also have a relationship with your child? Having kids is hard enough without imposing all of these rigid rules on yourself. Balance is key here. Apologize to your wife and realize that being a good father also includes being a loving partner. This post made me panic a bit. I love my significant other, and I would love to have kids, but the idea of just being pushed to the side so easily for up to 18 years, and then being expected to be okay or happy about it, really hurt. This is making me really question having kids. He sounds too immature to be a husband or a father, to be honest. Yep. Dude is what we call a showboat father. All of his actions are, look at me, I'm such a good father. Everything is everybody else's fault though, never his. He's going to lose it all soon if he doesn't figure his crap out. And now onto the update. My wife told me she won't have kids with me again because I'm not putting her first. How do I convince her to reconsider? I made a post on another sub, which was a bad idea. So someone referred me to this one. The other post has the backstory, but the summary is my wife feels like I'm spending way more time with our son than I do with her. I explained my reasons, but she has still insisted that I was being selfish with my time. She then gave me an ultimatum. She asked me to choose her or the kid, which was a stupid question to begin with. She stopped speaking to me for a few days, and then yesterday, she told me she won't be having kids with me ever again, and she meant it. I had an anxiety attack, and I went on my knees and begged her to reconsider. But it seems she is hell-bent on getting tubal ligation. I cried my eyes out on the way to work and back. How on earth do I convince an angry wife not to do this? I already told her that I'll change and spend more time with her, but she's ignoring me. And now in the comments... A lot of people struggle to find the balance between parenting and maintaining their relationship with their partner. Your last post made it sound like you have absolutely no intention of even trying to find that balance, and you expect your wife to be okay with being completely put off until your child has grown. That's not going to work, and will only lead to divorce. Wanting what's best for your child means nurturing the relationship between you and your son's mother. You can't honestly expect to completely neglect your marriage and expect your wife to still be there waiting for your time and attention once the child is grown. 
If you're not even interested in trying, your wife is absolutely making the right decision in not having more children with you. If you can't find a balance with one kid, you are not going to find it with more children who would further divide your time and attention. If you want to change your wife's mind, you're going to have to show her that you're willing to put in the time and effort into your marriage, and it might be too late for that based on your own words to your wife. Good luck. Just when you thought you'd found the dumbest guy on the internet, a new challenger rises to take the mantle. That kid is either going to grow up to be the biggest pampered asshole, or grow up hating his father for being one of those helicopter parents. Honestly, this seems like the kind of father who will lose all interest once the kid hits 3 to 5 and starts becoming their own little person. That's it exactly. Once he's old enough to disappoint OP, he'll move on to the next kid. Which is probably why he's so heartbroken that she decided not to have any more. Ew, it challenged me. I hate it. Quote, she can't leave me and she won't. It's not, it's not. The very essence of your being is to bear kids. I think those were quotes from comments. And that's where my brain screeched right off the road. At the beginning, you could have read this as an overexcited new parent with some parental abandonment trauma to work through. But nope. This guy is just a big bag of yikes. In addition to his wife, I also feel sorry for his child. OP seems the kind of smothering parent who's going to blow a fuse the minute his kid defies the Lord's plans. He'll be all surprised Pikachu when the kid grows up to be adamantly child-free, citing that kids destroy marriages as the main reason. There's about 52 flavors of ways that OP is going to mess this kid up, and he's 100% going to try to collect them all like Pokemon. I've actually seen this marriage and child-rearing situation play out with a friend that I've known since school. The kid is now an adult in her late 30s. She's a lovely person, but she can't separate herself from her dad. All the men she dates are controlling and treat her like a little princess, but become nasty when they turn on her. She struggles to hold down a job because her dad swoops and bails her out when things get tough, or he builds her up so much that she thinks most jobs are beneath her. Her father is unable to form lasting adult relationships because his only hobby is keeping his daughter happy. No woman wants to go on a date and spend an hour looking at his photo albums. The mother left years ago when the daughter was a teen, for a myriad of obvious reasons. My husband told me that he's in love with my sister. I'm pregnant, and I don't know why this is happening to me. My sister and I had a shitty life growing up with a passive mother and an abusive stepfather. My sister was my protector and role model since none of the adults were. She tried to shift my stepdad's abuse on her when he got drunk so he wouldn't hurt me. When she left for college, she let me stay in her bed while she slept on the floor in her student room, the days I managed to run away from home. When I turned 16, she let me move in with her permanently. We never saw our parents again. My husband is very similar to my sister. They are both very calm and kind, both very intelligent. They have the same sense of humor, love the same music, books, movies, and games. It's like a weird, perverted thing that I found the male version of my sister to fall in love with. They get along very well, and that was so important to me because they are my only family. We got married a year ago after six years together, and I am 27 weeks pregnant now with our first baby. My sister met her boyfriend years ago. He got along very well with me and my husband, although I always felt that my husband never really liked the guy. When I asked him once why he didn't like him, he got flustered and told me that he didn't know that it was noticeable and apologized. He told me he just didn't think that he was good enough for her. Her boyfriend proposed to my sister last night. We were just having pizzas and they were having beers in my sister's balcony and the boyfriend just suddenly went down on his knees and took out a ring. She was very surprised but happy all the same and said yes. When we went back home, my husband was a little bit tipsy. He told me that he wasn't tired and that he's going to take one more beer and watch TV and that I should go to bed. I went back to the living area and he was sitting there and crying. I asked him what's going on and he told me that he was in love with my sister. Has been for years, but that he knew how wrong this was. He told me that he loved me very much and promised to be a good husband and father to our daughter. He slept on the couch. He's still sleeping now. I'm shocked and full of anxiety. I don't know what to do or how to feel about this. My sister, should I tell her? 
Nothing can be the same again, but she's my only family and my best friend. And my husband. Is this over? I've been so blind, but now I see everything. Of course he's in love with her. How could I be shocked now? Can I save this marriage and my baby? I promised her a better life than the one that I had. I promised her kind and loving parents. I can't let her come into this world with estranged parents and new people in their lives. What can I do? And now in the comments, Grandma here. Don't fall for the sunken cost fallacy, please. You spent your youth with him. Do you want to spend your adult years and middle age with a guy who liked you at first, well, enough to date you, and then met your sister and moved back to your area, then fell in love? You see, she's the perfect one because he never really had a relationship with her, just a fantasy. You see, I had beautiful sisters. I didn't have great self-esteem when I was young because, you know, comparisons. But the one boundary I had with the men in my life, they had to want me first and not my sisters. I never wanted to feel less than with my guy because I had enough of that in my family. So my dear, your choice is a therapy to allow you to live and thrive because I'm sure he'll suck it up and say he'll stay married with you because baby, etc. He'll say yes because you're his wife, etc. Your decision will be do what you want to live your life, knowing your courtship and marriage was not the truth for him. Can you trust him to change to realize that his love was a fantasy? Can you live with your sister always thinking he's looking at her first and settling for you? Hard questions to answer that must be answered for you to have a happy life going forward. And most especially if your sister is not at fault. She really isn't. 1. You and your sister's relationship is not impacted by this. She's living her life. You're good. 2. If you really want to save your marriage, you and your husband must go to a marriage counsellor, point blank. You need to work if this is going to last after his pronouncement. 3. If the counsellor cannot save things, children know when a relationship is unhealthy, and they will be happier and better in a single parent home when the parent is happy than in one where there is fighting or drama. I am so sorry that you're going through this, but you can break that family pattern of abuse, even if you have to do it as a single parent. Just keep reminding yourself that baby's needs come first, and that sometimes that means that you need to prioritize you so that you can be there for baby. Back up to the post, we have an edit for update. He is awake now, and I have spoken to him. He apologized for hurting me last night. He said that he just felt despair, like he had something very beloved and important in his life that he lost, and he was mourning it. He told me that he loved me very much, and he wanted for this to work for us and the baby. I asked him if he loved her more than me, and he said that it's just a different type of love. I asked him if he could choose between me or her, and he said that he would choose me. I asked him if he thought that she was more beautiful, and he said that I'm conventionally more attractive. I asked him if he has stayed with me all these years to be near her. He said that I was being unfair to him because he did love me. I asked him if he's okay never seeing her again. He teared up, but then said he would do anything to save this marriage. He then added that he never really had a mother or a female figure in his life. That's probably why he's attached to her, because she's very warm and loving. I asked him, do you love her as a mother figure, or do you want to sleep with her? He didn't answer. I then asked him if he fantasized about her while sleeping with me. He refused to answer at first, and then said, why are you doing this to yourself? I asked him, will he lose interest in me if she's out of our lives, and it's just us? He looked like he was thinking about this for the first time, and then he said that he chose me and my baby. He wants to start therapy and counselling because he thinks this marriage is salvageable. And now, on to update 2. We had dinner with my sister and her fiancé. My husband was unusually silent and didn't initiate any talk with my sister, and he barely looked at her. It was a nice dinner. My sister is too happy to notice anything with her engagement and trip tomorrow. Before she went, however, my husband hugged her, longer than usual. He told her that he was happy for her and he wished her a great trip, all while hugging her. And then he held her hand and told her I didn't congratulate you properly yesterday because I was drunk, and then he congratulated her again. He was tearing up again, 
and then he hugged my sister's fiancé and congratulated him. He was silent on our way home. He told me that he loved me when we got back, and that he will do anything to make this work, but I shouldn't make any decisions while hurt. We are starting couples therapy. I want him to be 100% honest. He asked me not to tell anyone about his confession, because it meant nothing. I told him that I didn't want him around my sister anymore if I would give him a chance. He asked me how this would work when we are always together. She will suspect something, and he doesn't want me to tell her because he is embarrassed. I told him he could just minimize his interactions with her. I told him to sleep on the couch again tonight because I haven't made up my mind about my next move yet, and that, until then, it's the couch for him. Good night, and thanks for everything, including teaching me how to make bold text. What an exhausting day. And now, on to the third update. I'm thankful for everyone who's reached out asking for any new updates. I just don't think I have information enough to make a new post, but I have gone through all the comments, and thank you. I asked my husband for separation because I need to be on my own to make my decision. We are also starting marriage counselling. Whether we stay together or not, I want to know everything that he has been withholding from me. He thinks that I'm torturing myself, but he's wrong. I am tortured with half-truths. With marriage counselling, I'm hoping that I could get to the bottom of his feelings in a safe environment. He cried when I told him that I wanted to separate. He told me he has lost everything in one day because of a drunk confession that meant nothing. He loves me and he wants to be with me. He suggested that we move away. He's had job offers in other cities on several occasions. He said this could be our new start. We were renovating the basement this summer to make it a guest room because our current guest room is being turned into a baby room. He will live in the basement. It has separate entrances and the mini kitchen is almost finished. I have decided not to tell my sister about any of this. This is my battle and my marriage. I love my sister so much, but I'll be very honest here. I resent her. I'm jealous of her and I think I've always been jealous of her. She is a way better person than I am. I hate that I never had the chance to return the favor, as she has always been perfect and never needed help. I resent the fact that she isn't as angry as I am about the injustice that we had to endure. I hate that she's so good to me and my husband. I hate that he sees how much better of a person she is, and I hate that I don't blame him for loving her instead of me. And now in the comments, you are blaming the wrong person. Your husband is at fault and has treated you poorly. None of this is on your sister, it is on your husband. Y'all, she's not actually blaming her sister, she just feels jealous, which is only natural, considering her own husband loves her sister more than he loves her. Stop invalidating her feelings. You can't imagine how difficult this must be for her. Imagine finding out your husband has been in love with your sister for years while you were carrying his child. Keep in mind that pregnancy hormones are affecting her emotions right now, so maybe don't get on her case for feeling something as normal as jealousy. Jealousy is natural to feel, especially in this particular scenario, where her own husband thinks her own sister is better than her. Of course she feels insecure and jealous, and she's allowed to. Leave her be and let her vent her emotions for F's sake. And now to another update. My husband confessed to being in love with my sister, the aftermath. Hi, I was here about a month ago with my woe about my husband breaking down and confessing that he was in love with my sister and has been for years. The short version is that we're getting a divorce and that he doesn't want to have anything to do with our daughter. I will include the original post. After my sister's engagement and his confession, he made me a promise that he will love me and that he's going to do all in his power to be a good and loving husband and father. He didn't want me to tell my sister anything because he was embarrassed and we slowly started to plan a future together in another city. He was already getting a better job offer in the other city and now he thought that it was time to move on. I agreed and we started marriage counseling. I told my sister that we were moving, and she was very distraught, but she, as always, didn't object, and she supported me. I don't know if she felt that it was weird that my husband wasn't hanging out with us anymore, but she never asked. She was probably just busy with her own happiness and the changes in her life. After her vacation, she came home and told me everything. 
She was pregnant, and she was glowing, and that was the reason for this sudden engagement. Her fiancé wants to get married before the baby was born. She then asked me to keep it a secret. She probably didn't mean even from my husband, but I kept it a secret anyway, because she was waiting for the second trimester to make the announcement. She finally broke down crying, however, about me moving away when she needed me the most, but then later apologized for being selfish. She understood that we needed to provide the best life for my daughter, including finding better jobs elsewhere. I cried for a whole week. A week ago, my husband was in a job interview in the other city, and he was going to stay there for the week to sign a lease to a new apartment. We thought we could try out the new life before selling our house to buy a new one there. My sister and her boyfriend made the announcement that they were expecting last Tuesday, the day after my husband's interview. Not 30 minutes later, my husband called me. He was drunk and he was crying and asking if it was true and if I knew. He called me a cruel liar for not telling him. He said that it was so unfair. My sister's fiancé was a loser and he didn't deserve her. Her fiancé is a carpenter and my sister is a pediatrician. And he told me that he needed to be alone for a while, so he switched off his phone. On Friday, he texted me that he didn't want to be with me anymore and that he didn't want to be in my daughter's life. He was sorry, but he just couldn't do it anymore. If I agreed to free him from his responsibilities as a father, he will leave me the house. I tried calling him, but he had switched off his phone again. I cried all night. Yesterday morning, my sister called me to ask what's up. My husband has asked her to meet up with him because he wanted to tell her something that he couldn't say over the phone, that he was coming on Monday to see her. She asked me what's going on, but I was too tired to tell her anything. She and her fiancé are coming over today, and I will probably need to tell her everything now. Edit for final update. Hi again. I knew I could count on you for support. My sister was here, and I told her everything. I got help from showing her parts of what I've written here, because honestly, I'm too tired to go into details about what I've been going through for all these weeks. I told her that Lucas was going to call, asking to meet her, probably to tell her that he loved her, or maybe something more sinister, so she needed to stay away from him. Her fiancé was on the edge of his seat with anger. My sister was just crying and apologizing and trying to hug and stroke my hair. I hated her touch. I don't know why. I know nothing is her fault. I told my sister that now I warned her, I want to be on my own for a while and that I didn't want any contact with any of them. I've been thinking about moving to another city. There is a small town that one of my best high school friends live in after getting married. It's up north and everything's bigger and better and cheaper. I can easily find a small rental unit until the divorce is final and I can easily get a job there. If I can manage a pace there, I can give birth up there with zero stress. I texted my husband that I've told my sister everything and that her and her fiancé aren't happy. He called me an hour later. He apologized and told me that he didn't mean to freak her out. He just wanted to see her and say goodbye, but that he won't bother her if she feels scared. He is still the same man and won't let anything happen to her. He didn't ask about me or my baby. He's staying in the new place and he's starting his new job in September. He just thought that he would come back to say goodbye before moving to his new city permanently. My sister texted me later that she loved me and that she would stay out of my way if that's what I wanted, but please to not go through with my plans to move, because she needs me and she would do anything to make it up to me. I didn't answer. I hate it when she's so perfect and kind. F off. Our next post is titled... Am I the asshole if I refuse to de-baptize my aunt? My parents believe in the freedom of choosing one's own religion. My mother was raised Catholic, while my father believes in a god without participating in any church. I, 14, honestly do not care too much about the topic, to the dismay of my aunt. During my childhood, she constantly tried to pressure my mother into getting me baptized. Whenever I visited them, she would try to push Christianity on me. She would read the Bible to me and take me to her church, among other things. This made me very uncomfortable, to the point where I did not want to visit her anymore. I have recently developed an interest in herbs and plants. 
This somehow convinced her that I practice witchery. Now she constantly switches between trying to save me and making a point of avoiding me. Most of the family thinks that she's silly, but like always, when she's acting crazy, everyone just accepts it. Since I did not budge, she focused on my brother, who is five. He is friends with my cousin, who is six, and therefore spends a lot of time at their house. On his latest visit, my aunt decided to make an appointment with a priest, forge my mother's signature, and get my brother baptized. After my brother told my mother about the incident, which my aunt told him not to do, she then confronted my aunt on her next visit. My aunt proudly confessed to having saved my brother, and a screaming match ensued. As I already mentioned, my parents strongly believe that everyone should be able to choose their own beliefs and not join a church until one is old enough to make an informed decision. To summarize my aunt's words, she could not believe that our mother was willfully condemning us to hell and that it was no wonder that I had become a satanic witch. She had to act because my mother obviously couldn't be brought to her senses and someone had to save the boy. In a moment of anger, I went to my room to get one of my pots. I have one pot in the shape of a skull, and I filled it with water. While they were still screaming at each other, I poured the water over her. Then I declared her to now be baptized a witch and the lawful wife of Satan. I'll be honest, I enjoyed the expressions of shock and then panic on her face. She told me to undo what I did, but I refused. Once she realized she could not convince me, she stormed out of the house. Now, she has told the whole family about it, and my grandparents and other relatives have been bombarding my mother with hateful messages. My mother says that she understands why I did what I did, but that I need to undo it to keep the peace. I'm supposed to make a show of de-baptizing her and declaring her Christian again. I'm just tired of everybody constantly talking about religion, and I'm fed up with my aunt and everybody's endurance of her. If she can just go around and baptize my brother, why can't I do the same to her? Am I the asshole if I don't comply with my parents' wishes? And now in the comments, for sure not the asshole. As someone who was raised very Catholic and now doesn't give one, your parents absolutely have the right mindset, and I'm not gonna lie, your aunt sounds insane. I think you handled that situation perfectly, and I'd suggest performing more satanic rituals in her presence and see if she bursts into flames. If she does, I would love an update. And OP replies, Insane summarizes her character pretty well. Thank you for your understanding reply slash rating. I'll let you know if she combusts by any chance. Not the asshole, and report your aunt to her church. If she's lucky, she'll just be kicked out. I've heard, admittedly second-hand, that people who trick a pastor into baptizing children without parental permission could have their own baptism revoked since they didn't follow the letter of spirit of what baptism is supposed to stand for. And OP replies, Oh, that would be interesting to see. Thank you for the advice. My mother is already planning on getting in contact with the church. And now, on to the update. First of all, Thank you for all the helpful replies and the awards. This got way more attention than I would have thought. I wanted to give an update to the whole thing. Apparently, neither the baptism of my brother nor the priest itself were legitimate. The dude is not even registered as a priest and is just someone that she found online. He, with my aunt and my grandmother, held a small, unofficial ceremony. My grandmother confessed this to my grandfather once the drama started, and he has now told my mother. The whole thing is rather weird, and my grandfather told my mother to report the priest, but my mother just wants to leave the whole story behind us. Since his baptism doesn't have any real effect on my brother, she sees this as an easy solution to get her sister off her back. We're just happy that my brother is not actually baptized. Also, good news is, my mother no longer wants me to de-baptize my aunt, and finally accepted that she is simply crazy. She will try to talk with my grandmother tomorrow, since she is not as crazy as my aunt and can hopefully convince her of leaving me alone. According to my grandfather, my aunt told her the story of me baptizing her very different, which is why my relatives were on her side. Despite all of the hilarious suggestions on how I could continue to scare my aunt, I will not do anything like that. I will just wait and see how things go from here. And now in the comments, 
Honestly, my advice to the aunt would have been to get a proper priest to consult on the case, who would have told her that there is no such thing, but maybe blessed her to make her feel better. Do you really want the Satanist to do another ritual on you? Right? Also, to follow the aunt's logic, there is no way to de-baptize a Christian, so why would she assume a satanic de-baptism would work? Side note, I need to know what she told the family about the original satanic baptism. I'm sure whatever version she told was fantastical and hilarious. And that's where I'm going to end the episode today, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it down below, and I will see you on the next episode. Bye.